morning! Uh, this is Dimension 20's fun weekly live show. You tuned in to Twitch to watch us play some D&D, the continuing adventures of the Bad Kids, a group of teenage adventurers from the Eggford Adventuring Academy who are on their spring break quest for 60% of their grade to find and retrieve the crown of the Nightmare King. Uh, last, we left off our heroes. There had been some shenanigans with strange nightmare forces. They got some hirelings, including two of Fig Faith's parents, uh, and the third is trapped in a gem with her right now. Uh, and they had set up to Bastion City. There was a fight with some demons at the Hotel Cavalier. They made an extra dimensional space in a celestial van, headed off on the ocean, uh, and have arrived at the pirate city of Leviathan a massive city made of a titanic amalgamation of shipwrecks lashed and built upon together as a floating metropolis on the waves. Uh, have I left uh, anything out of our recap from the previous weeks, or does that about catch us up to speed? I don't think so, but I do have a question about money. Mm -hmm. Are oh, we yeah. just each of us carrying around 20,000 gold pieces on our person? No, I don't think you okay, are. Good. Uh, 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 it is up to you guys to decide how much money you would have chosen to convert into gold pieces uh, prior to your expedition. Um, the amount of weight, uh, uh, how many gold pieces in a pound, uh, we will find out about 50 coins in a pound. So I'll let you guys figure out how many pounds of gold coins you guys would have wanted to bring in this van. Oh, but you also got the Ball's briefcase, which is a, right. a, a bag of holding. Bag of holding. Uh, but the yeah. bag, is the bag of holding heavy? Like, uh, no, it doesn't. I think it's, it does not weight gain weight as you put more stuff oh, in it. Okay, great. Uh, I'll let each of you make that decision privately to yourself how much money you converted before leaving. Great. Uh, so we don't have to spend time coordinating. <laughs> yep. uh, but you guys uh, do have to convert some amount of your wealth into actual specie before you head off to sea. Uh, yes? Yeah, why'd you leave out Hilda Hilda? I mean, I feel like that was- Oh, Hilda Hilda. <laughs> I feel like Please that's where they have point. massive- uh, that And is the a, Night Yor, which also you did. Yeah, these yeah, massive- You didn't mention the menace sure, of the sure. very Night Yor. Like, that's all I have written down from last week. Is yeah. Hilda Hilda. Honestly, down. that's all I've been able to write. Since. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, a little bit of housekeeping too. Shout out to all of our fans making awesome fan art. Yeah, we love uh, it. Not only the incredible artists who have been drawing incredible uh, uh, art of the characters, including uh, the, the van boat, uh, the hang van, as it is sometimes called. Mm. Um, the hang van? The hang yeah. van. Um, They're smarter than us, god damn it. Uh, but I think also, van boat's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but also we've got a lot of musicians making awesome music. Yeah. That song is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Zach and Emily made awesome music. We just had uh, Reddit user Semjax make one specifically talking about the Night Yorb. Y'all love to talk about the Night Yorb even though we've been told over and over again, speak not of the night yorb. Um, uh, also, uh, make sure to check out, uh, we got uh, uh, awesome shirts and stuff. We, I think we have one of the hang van itself up on the site now, uh, so make sure to check that out. We return now to the world of Spire. It's so oh. crunchy. That My celery is why? crunchy. That's the worst food what? you can have. Why I'm, now? I'm gonna get it in before we get into it. I can't eat it in the Hurry. middle. Hurry! <laughs> eat it string by string. Sorry. We return Rude. now to the world of Spire. As we do so, you hear the crashing of water against the hull of Leviathan, the huge wooden behemoths of structure surrounding you. You hear the laughter of pirates, the playing of music, and suddenly, whoosh, whoosh, coming up out of the water, you see ropes surging up into the heights around you as a colossal trawling net whoa, picks up the van and you are all flung with, around within the van. Luckily the blankets cushion most of the blow and you feel yourself being surged upward into the maw of Leviathan. Uh, you see a massive wooden plank uh, covered with pirates that begin to put huge hooks <laughs> and pull the net over to a giant platform. Uh, what do you guys do as this is happening? Uh, Fabian, Fabian, is this normal? Hey, Fabian. Yes, uh, yes, well, uh, all right, everyone, everyone be calm. These are classic pirate shenanigans. Um, As the skipper, I just want to say a couple things before yes. we go up here. Mm. Uh, maybe the skipper and the, the king of boats and uh, the captain and the first mate can circle up and talk about it. Yeah, let's, yeah, uh, of course. 
So what do we do? Yeah, I don't really know. Okay, what to do. It's Leviathan. Uh, don't worry, my father has his name will get us a long way here. So you let me do the talking. Everyone just be cool, alright? This is like a cool place. I'm nothing but cool. 100%. So just awesome. Looks like it's Salesian Bolson! Some sort of magic tech, something of the like. Should be able to fetch a pretty penny. <laughs> also, uh, uh, be mean. Always uh, be mean. Hey, you scurvy dogs! Uh, what? Uh, what? I said, I'm not scurvy! Uh, yes, yes, you are. This all. pirate on the deck, full burst into tears, oh, is no. clutched so by a number of other pirates. Um, you uh, are lowered onto this massive deck. You guys see a wooden platform piled high with flotsam and jetsam, the wreckage of ships that are devoured by the city and pulled up in these nets. You see that farther away, there are other piles of just looted goods staying here on the deck. Of the goods that are looted here, you see very little in the way of gold or diamonds and those sort of rich, rare items. You see a lot of like wood, uh, uh, materials, sailcloth. It looks like this place is a giant intake for all of the things the city would need to stay afloat and stay alive. With a swirl of a long blue captain's coat, you hear thudding as the van is lowered slowly onto the deck, still with like the netting around it. You see a warforged approach. This is a pirate that is a living automaton made of stone and rusted steel and wood. Um, you see that uh, in her head, there is one gleaming bright lantern eye, uh, some sort of like golem magic robot kind of look. Uh, the other eye it has fully like short circuited and you see the little tungsten like wire that would normally be lit is frayed up under there. Uh, she is a good eight and a half feet tall um, and approaches uh, under the sort of blue coat, you see just a normal like uh, dirty white sailor shirt, uh, striped pants that go down to her like, uh, her feet are sort of like tri-clawed. They look more, that look, they don't look as approximated to humanoid features. They're kind of like more robotic down there. Um, she does not carry a sword at her side, but you do see that uh, her right hand is three stone fingers that kind of close like a claw, and her left hand appears to be a four-barreled rotating cannon. Um, I hold out a cigarette. Can I get a light? Um, <laughs> you you open the van door to lean out and say this. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> I stop being. Like, it looks what? Okay, uh, that, sorry. Uh, Fabian, you, you seem person. to have offended them. No, I, I, Are they usually the sensitive? No, 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 things must have changed since my father was here. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, uh, you see that uh, the person who you recognize, actually, go ahead and give me an intelligence check to see if you would know this person. Uh, it's going to be a seven. You don't know who this person is. Uh, you look up and you see that the Warforged sort of eye looks down. You see that the, the uh, Warforged speaks to everyone and goes, Looks like you may have caught some fish in this can. Boom, boom, and bangs on the side of the van. Best to let them out. Uh, the door is flung open one of the pirates. The net dropped, and you guys are free to exit onto the deck as the pirates here give you some leeway. Uh, and this Warforged uh, stands in front of you. I whisper to the van, hey, just pretend to be a dumb van, not like you're a person. What? Just don't talk? Far out, I'll keep it. Hush, hush. Okay. But right now, I'm a normal van. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, you see that the Warforged steps out, and I assume Fabian steps to the front? I mean, obviously. <sighs> Hello. Uh, I'm uh, Fabian Seacaster, son of Bill Seacaster. Bill Seacaster. <laughs> you speak now to the bosun of Leviathan. Jemina Joy is what I am called. You say you are the son of old Bill. That's right. Uh, 
Give me a persuasion check if you would be Jimmy so or what? Uh, Jamina Joy. Uh, that's going to be a uh, modded 20. Dirty 20? Um, Dirty 20. Uh, she looks at you and says, You are not dressed as a pirate. Rumor of the wind is that your father is slain. That's right. And I'm the one who did it. Uh, all the pirates around go, <gasps> Ooh, that'd be, uh, that'd be very piratey indeed. <laughs> also, he's wearing that very cool eye patch, which I feel is pretty piratey. Yes, and it belonged to my father, along with the sword. And having slain him, I took them off his body, assembled a crew of my own. Ahoy. Ahoy. We're very different. You see, ahoy. one of the pirates leans down and says, Notice how they've all said ahoy to us. And that's quite piratey. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're well versed in the culture and ways, uh, taught by my father himself before I struck him down. Also, Cathilda is here, and she's a mighty pirate. Yeah, also Cathilda, the uh, maid. Cathilda looks out, um, and all the pirates take two full steps back. Uh, you see that um, <laughs> Jemina uh, kneels down on one knee and uh, says, Cathil the Black, terror of the Celestine Sea. And she goes, oh, you are being a darling. <laughs> That's all right. Up, up with you. There's no need for that. I'm sorry, are you kneeling for, for me or for my mate? Oh, I kneel out of respect and a desire to prolong my life. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to kill anybody. <laughs> you see, uh, Cathilda pats you on your leg and says, they're worried that I am going to kill them, Master Fabian. But you're a maid. Maids can't kill. Oh, you sweet, you cheeky boy. Right. She pinches your cheek. <laughs> That's all right, Fabian. You know, it might be best here in Leviathan if you don't call more attention to me than is needed. I, I mean, but you're, I mean, I mean, you're a maid, so I mean, it's not like you'll be at the front of anything anyway. Matilda, I think you make a fearsome presence, and I have a disguise kit. I'm willing to help you disguise yourself. Oh, that might be for the best. Darling. Okay, what are we thinking? Blonde, brunette, redhead, ombre. Ooh, a nice ombre. Okay, then. <laughs> we dip dye Cathilda's hair. <laughs> it takes five hours. Yeah. <laughs> What's an <that>, ombre? <laughs> <laughs> it's that. It's like all kind of like this. Oh, or oh yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> um, and if anything happened, if, if if we need to, I can cast greater invisibility on you. It only lasts for a minute. Oh. But if there's a moment where we need to, very kind of you, darling. That would be all right. Uh, Jamina stands and says, well, "What metal can have we pulled out of the sea here?" So, uh, this belongs to my skipper, Gorgug. It's uh, some kind of a, a van that's a boat. It's, my van is a boat and my boat is a van. Uh, and this is it. Um, it sort of uh, floats like a boat and has a propeller in the back. But and then also can drive on land. Does the two things, so. Um, go ahead and make a persuasion check for me, Gorgug. Hey, Gorgug, look at me real quick. I went get him. What's that? Give inspiration. <laughs> uh, what do I add to that? A D8. A D8. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, roll a D8. World boy. It's persuasion? It's an 11. <laughs> wow. What? So this no, no, is no, not your vessel, but the skipper's. Well, it's it, persuasion. I mean, well, that's perception. I, yes, it belongs to the skipper. The skipper. Then I am afraid, skipper. Your vessel has been seized by the Maelstrom's maw. Okay. As raw materials. I hear you. I hear you. Could. I'm so sorry to somewhere? do this. I'm so sorry to do this. I am a famous rock star. And what is that? Well. You are a rock star. You don't listen to any music. <laughs> See, she grabs you and lifts you up and starts techno. to inspect you. You are not made of any rock that I have ever seen. I know. Yeah, that's because I don't have my guitar in my hand. Then you'll see. Mm. Oh, guitar made of rock. Yeah. It's surely sound awful to the ear, no? No, it sounds awesome. Careful, it might be too powerful for them. Remember, if I can get you to dance, <laughs> let us keep our band. <laughs> I do not dance. 
I can only judge the incessant beating of music, for the pounding of its rhythm, it does not move me, for in my chest of stone and wood, there beats no heart to keep in time. I don't really like dancing either. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah I don't really get it. Yeah, should yeah. we just I like try it when there's rules, <laughs> and when they're on, it stresses me out. Yeah, thank you. I think we, I'm going <laughs> to plug my bass into my amp and try anyway. Three, four, I'm just hitting this uh, um, I'm going to need a performance check from you. Okay. For both of us? Uh, uh, if you want to, if you want to g- give a performance check to give the help action, you give me. Just I a DC- already have advantage. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have a, where'd you get advantage from? Actor, performance, and deception. Uh, performance actor only gets it when you're impersonating another person. Oh, okay. So okay. if you want to give me a DC, you're giving me a DC ten performance to give advantage to Fig. Okay. Okay. Right. Just, okay. Ten. Ten. Totally need Wonderful. Okay, you can roll this with advantage. I'm going to say you need at least a DC 20 to make the type of impression we need here. What do you have as a... Mom. We'll find out. We got a 23. Okay, uh, okay. so uh, you plug in your ear. All these pirates have kind of gathered around. Uh, is anyone in, like keeping an eye on the pirates while Fig sets up? Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, cool. I don't trust these pirates. So. Uh, <laughs> anyone that wants to can give me a perception check or insight, whichever you'd like. Uh, Twenty-four. Oh. Twenty-four. Three. Three. Eighteen. Eighteen. Cool. Um, oh, perception. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, what are Riz and Adine paying attention to at this moment? Um, the back of the boat. I'm gonna like, cause I think that we're standing on the roof, right? Cause we were. You are standing up on the roof. So to give you an idea of of perspective, this is effectively a wooden platform made out of driftwood that uh-huh. is the size of like an aircraft carrier, where ropes and nets from the jutting neighborhoods of like shipwreck mm-hmm. that come out of here. This is basically like a pincer at the front of the city of Leviathan that swallows up, pulls out of the right. water, and just chop shops anything the city can catch. So right? can I cast, it takes a minute, but we've been chatting, um, snare and set a trap at the back of the, the back doors of the boat? At the back doors of, of the van boat? Of the van boat. Sure. Um, just to make sure that nobody breaks in some other way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you cast Snare back there. Um, with a, uh, uh, so you're keeping an eye on the back of the boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you'll notice if anyone goes there to mess up, what's Riz keeping an eye out for? I think I just want to get a feel for um, if this automaton is the, you know, big leader here, or if like anybody else is coming, or like how the pirates are acting, if they're like, seem like they're cool with us or if they're just acting that way so that they can attack. Uh, you see the Warforged is definitely, she's the highest status person here. Is the okay. bosun just in charge of a deck or is uh, that like? In a ship, a bosun is in charge of like the rope, the rigging, like a lot of the material goods on a ship. So for her to be the bosun of Leviathan, uh, Leviathan's political order is something you guys probably could ask Fabian about, but uh, it doesn't really, ha- you can imagine that a pirate city doesn't run super well. Sure. Um, in all likelihood, Jemina might be one of the only elements of the city that works how it's supposed to, mm-hmm. because she looks very powerful. Um, and you see that her job, if she's the boss of Leviathan, would be probably to keep the city intact on a fundamental level. And like looking at the city, you see that she's got her work cut out for her. Like the city is not, uh, there's a like, you're looking around and you're like, yeah, this could stand a fair bit of work. This is a fixer upper for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Probably it takes all of her time and energy just to Mm -hmm. process the Maelstrom's Maw and then keep uh, the, the most pressing existential threats to the city's structure patched up, fixed and worked with. Um, uh, that being said, uh, with that 20, is that more of an insight or a perception, would you say? Insight. Um, I think I had two, I'm trying to see if anybody reacted to, uh, Fabian being Bill Seacaster's thought, like if there's anybody staring at him or if there's anybody who's like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking for this Guardy O'Brien character if they're like in the crowd. You notice, um, a, uh, bright red tiefling in the back mm-hmm. of 
this cluster of people. Uh, they're a pretty young boy. Very, they look about teenaged as well, but obviously not with the guy. They don't have like this young teen probably hasn't grown up in a culture that has teenagers in the way that Solace does. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see that they've got like a scarf and a lot of you know jangly jewelry on. They look extremely sort of curious and malnourished. Uh, the main thing is that they don't look like someone who spends all day dragging flotsam out of the ocean. Like everyone else here looks like they work on Jamina's crew. This kid uh, looks a little scrawny to be in this number. And when Fabian announces himself, uh, his eyes light up, this young tiefling kid. Uh, with a 23 insight, um, you see that the, there is a uh, kind of stunned, starstruck quality to this kid. OK. Um, in any case, you plug your amp in. You get drumming. Uh, you got a 23. Uh, Jamina looks and says, Rule. Guitar, there is no hole in it, no cavity to create sound. Yeah, the amp does that. You have a lot in common with an amp. What? Yeah. You begin to play, and uh, you see, as you start to play, uh, Jamina goes, I... <laughs> The power! <laughs> the power! <laughs> um, you Are you pregnant? <laughs> um, you see? Is she? Uh, you see that uh, one of the pirates in the back goes, oh, right. well, I'm not sure this type of music's for me. It doesn't, what's happening to, to me hips? Me hips, um, and he just starts like. He starts grinding. Just starts grinding <laughs> with the other pirates. Um, now do it together, if you guys get together. And you see one says, Walter, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm doing it too. <laughs> uh, and you see that. Uh, uh, one of the other pirates, this sort of old, bearded, toothless guy, just starts full windmilling. Just, ah! Ah! Uh, and they just uh, scream. You see one of them uh, grabs his eyes and goes, I can't behold it any longer! Um, they begin to just scream and run around. Um, you see that as the amp sort of just power chords slam uh, out of the amp over and over, you see that uh, Jamina falls uh, to her knees, her eyes kind of like flickering, and she starts to crawl over to the amp, slowly being buffeted back by the power of pure rock and roll, gets to the amp, unplugs it. <laughs> I don't mean to be presumptuous, but if you ever wanted to experiment, if we plugged into you, you could be an amp. The music could run through your body. A vessel for magic this powerful <laughs> is more than my core could withstand. <laughs> your crew harnesses powers faster than I can comprehend. <laughs> they are very, very mighty. If this vessel belongs to your skipper, where then does your vessel lie? Oh, mine, mine is up top. Hangman! Um, you see that uh, the hangman <coughs> comes down and goes, Shire, this terrible van, we should let them chop it up. <coughs> How will we get home? Um, you see that uh, Jimmy looks at it and says, Is this thing more? steed or vessel? Both. Uh, I am predominantly a pirate of the land, and thusly my vessel uh, suits me accordingly. Uh, go ahead and give me another persuasion check. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be... Can I help him? Uh, if you like, give me a persuasion check yourself. Beat a 10, you can help him. It's kind of cocked, but it was a 10. 14. Uh, that's a 16. Okay, and you have advantage, you've with, got help. With this. Gorgon's help, it's a 16. Gotcha, cool, cool, cool. Um, you see that she says, Very well. You then are young master sea caster. Well, as I have said, this has been seized for the Leviathan. But if you wish, we can make an allowance in this case for you to purchase back that which has been taken by the city. Uh, for Can we pay in kind? I've got VIP tickets. 
Or do you mean the pale and kind? Well, is there anything that we could do to work off the debt instead of paying you money? If you wish to work for a year and a day. A year and a day. Oh, how much? Uh, just name a price. Um, okay, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, don't. That's not how you haggle. I, Look, I, what kind of pirate are you thinking? You know, well, I, I want us to get our boat in a van back or a van that's a boat. Right? I mean, it, what, anything under 100 gold pieces and it's yours. Why don't you just invoice my manager? What? How much is it? <laughs> Uh, you, uh, go ahead, we'll make a little haggling check here. Uh, whoever wants to make a uh, charisma check, flat charisma check. We to... refuse to be pushed around unless it's cheap, then that's fine. Nat 20! Oh, Nat 20. 20. You see that uh, Jemina looks at it and says, Given that I have never seen whatever this thing is before, yeah, 100 gold sounds fine. Sounds totally fine. Can we circle it's up short. and talk yeah. about it? Um, maybe? 100 insulted, gold is but that sounds kind fine. of a lot. We honestly got this for 20 gold. So giving you 100 gold is... Um, it's a reverse haggle. <laughs> you see it says, You are talking down from your previously stated price. It's no, 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 no. We have to buy... We have to give... Them on. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, Fagus just yeah. trying to get it even I'm lower. Trying to get it even lower. Oh, honestly, okay. kind of pushing it. We're starting at a hundred. Hey, you don't do just you, take the first price. I feel like you don't. Can they hear us? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're fully talking in front. I feel like I, you I close the van door. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> I feel like we can just walk into a bunch of pirates and be like, we have a ton of money, a hundred. Name That's your what price. I'm you saying. You get to name your price. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna take all of our money. Act the part of the pauper. What? That's we have to act the part of the pauper and and Definitely act like we have to act the part of the pauper. Pop you offered them VIP tickets. You said you were a rock star. It's literally <laughs> the very first thing you said is that I am a rock star. Let's try to get him a little lower. Let's try to get him a little lower. Let's do one hundred. Let's, I'm just going to I'm going to pay them. It's my money. I'm a very rich man. <laughs> okay. Just I feel like stop good. saying how rich you are. <laughs> we're going to get. Anyways. For the record, invoicing my manager was to try to tie them up in paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm opening the door. <laughs> Uh, cool, you open the door up. Uh, hey! Oops. Hi. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Ahoy! Ahoy again. I've stuck my face in a pie that could fill me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Good lord. Uh, you see as you fucking clowns <laughs> pile out of the van. Um, you see that Jamina is talking with the young tiefling. Um, the tiefling, I uh, talked with her a little Have bit. Have I seen lots of other tieflings before? Not really. Oh yeah, I pass along the info to you guys. Um, hey, just, uh, the tieflings a little out of place, and also they were super interested in Fabian, when mm. Fabian mentioned that he's Bill Seacaster. Sure tiefling... they weren't maybe, like, recognizing me? Yes. <laughs> uh -oh. Does the tiefling, uh, like, look like it's mixed with, does it seem like, uh, Related to Fabian in any way? <laughs> oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm an only child, all right? There's, there's, <laughs> there's no there's, way you're an only child. I mean, Under the no second you said, I'm an only child, child in a desperate voice, you stopped being an only child. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> or you doubled down in being an only child. Maybe. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, on your mother's side, not even then. Your mother is an elf and has lived for hundreds hey, of years. Yeah. All right, everyone is ganging up on me. No. I just, no. um, you see that Jemina uh, is handed a uh, bag by the tiefling, um, looks over uh, and says, Master Seacastra, farewell. Your voyage has brought you here to Leviathan. Your father dragged these ports, the greatest pirate to ever live. Well, he's dead now, and someone has to take his place. Mm -hmm. She stomps away, uh, and you see that the tiefling walks up to you guys, and he says, uh, Hello there, sorry to uh, uh, intrude, uh, but uh, uh, I've settled your debt with um, the uh, the bosun. Um, I want to brush my hair oh, back from my horns. The debt? Oh, that's right. I've given a uh, hundred gold pieces, um, yeah. uh, but we should abscond quickly because they will only be a hundred gold pieces for another ten or so minutes. Oh, oh but they're going to figure that out, and then they'll take the boat. What? Oh. 
Let's I, go. Are, are you no, gonna no, come? No, 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 no. I'm gonna go pay the boats in the hundred pieces. We should just go. It, we should no, just go. they're gonna. As soon as we leave the boat, they're gonna take it. But I this is what's your name? On this. I'm really oh, sorry. I like my name's Alistair Ash. Alistair Ash. Alistair Ash. Alistair Ash. Uh, AKA. Hi. A yeah. Wait, right. that's Alistair cool. Ash. Um, do you know a Gardy O'Brien? Oh, well, everyone knows Gardy O'Brien. They're the impresario of uh, the Gold Gardens. Is this like a place where I could drive the van on these boards? This thing moves? Yeah, yeah. it's a van. A what? A van. Wow, <laughs> Salesians, you know, they talk about you all the time, but you really, you know, you play music that sounds like how my hips feel when a woman dances and, right, you yeah. know. It's a cart that moves on its own. What? Yeah. A cart that moves on its own. Goals alive in court. I've seen everything, haven't I? How does it move without a dolphin at the so front? You, so you tricked those pirates to help us, and now you're just going to let them kill you, I guess? Why would they kill me? Because they'll be mad when the gold turns back to mm -hmm. rocks. Is this my first other tiefling I've ever met? <laughs> yes. You are seeing... I sink into a deep depression. <laughs> Can you, can you lead us to Guardy O'Brien if we take you in our moving cart? You would do that? Yeah. Please, yes. Oh, God, I've got to escape. You know, it's funny because you think, like, this lie is perfect and it's going to work, no problem. But then you're like, if they find out the truth. That... My problem with, with lies is I always forget that the other person has a mind and feelings and keeps existing after I've lied to them. Right, that's I, so I side, see. Mm, yeah. I side yeah, with Adine that we should really just interesting. pay. I side with Adine that we should pay. Yeah. All right, uh, well, uh, I, I'll track down the boats. I mean, but don't I we, can also we need the infor We need the information that this yes, person has. Yes, we can say thank you yeah, so you much. You with us, thank you, you so much. You have done a great magic trick for us. That's so cool, we're gonna also pay them. Oh, okay. How are you going to broach the subject of just wanting to double the cost yeah, of the? We should leave. Yeah, I, I'm actually. Let's Riz this gets in the car. Is so right. obvious. Let's do the let's do the pirate thing and just run. Okay, come okay, on. Okay, now. okay, right, okay. Okay, so is sort of thieving and lying sort of a, a sign of like respect in this town? I mean, I thought so, and then I said I called a man a scurvy <laughs> dog. And he was crying. I mean, this, this, <laughs> they're going to be so mad. I, but you can't be upset. He's extremely sensitive. Okay, well, or, then I, I think get... he has scurvy really bad. <laughs> <laughs> he must. People it's in the Maelstrom's Mall get scurvy a lot. Okay, so you guys pile into the van. Are you going to pay the bosun the extra or no? no. Can you mage yes. hand 100 gold pieces as Ow. we run we can't away? Even bring, if we bring it up, we'll get in trouble again. We'll have Why? To this is someone else did this to I'm going to say, hey, this guy that we don't know lied. How we 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 I side with Anna. The van is an enormous metropolis. There's probably about a million and a half people. Going. Let's go. Our van Let's is the go. only van. <laughs> it's so obvious. We're, we're uh, getting ourselves into a situation that the bosun comes and messes us up. Yeah. All right. Throw, throw him 100 gold. I think he's going to raise more questions. Uh, cool. So you mage hand 100 gold? Yeah. Cool. Uh, the bosun <laughs> yeah. grabs the gold as the van speeds away and says, I don't exactly understand. Wait, I have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys peel off. You see Alistair goes, Oh, look, oh, it's very nice that you all did that. That's <laughs> skin of my teeth. Hello. Uh, you start the van. As the van peels off, uh, Alistair just goes, <laughs> Screams <laughs> as the van moves. Who is, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know which side of you is demon, but what demon are you from? What demon am I from? Yeah. Well, rumor has it that on my mother's side I come from the stock of Garion, and on my father's side I also have infernal blood from Dispater himself. So. Don't know oh, those okay. things. I don't, I don't, know, know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Really cool. Um, can I do an insight check just on Alistair? Yeah, <laughs> I Alistair is like talking about how much, how much they love Do I recognize lying. this name? Can I do an insight check? I got a nat check? 20 insight. Uh, yeah, and I got a 26. 26, nat 20. I'll give oh. it a shot. <laughs> 13. I got a 12. Uh, 13 gonna, intelligence to remember this person. I'm not I'm not gonna waste a roll on this. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, I'm this okay. jerk. 13. No, I'm on, on him. Uh, this guy smells familiar to you. Literally. Literally smells familiar. He smells like like embers and brimstone a little bit, but also there's a smelling of like some maybe like a 
like a, a beard oil that's familiar to you, even though he's clean shaven and very young and scrawny. Um, with a 20 insight, you see that this guy has some kind of crush on Fabian or something. That oh, he's like, all right, okay. Uh, but it's a weird, he, it looks like hero worship or something. Okay. Um, uh, you see that, uh, and even with your insight as well, you can get a definite vibe. And he says, well, first of all, let me just say, Fabian Aramaeus Seacaster, oh my lord. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, were you a, uh, a, a friend of my father's? Or, uh... Oh, I am more than a friend of your father's. Oh. You're his best friend? Well, uh, hopefully when I die, I can become an even better friend of your father's. But um, is all of your crew safe to speak in front of my Lord Seacaster? Uh, of course. I am a follower of old Bill. I have sworn myself to his service. He, the de destroyer and descrier of the nine hells, he who aloft in a ship made of dragon carcass, pillages and raids the princes of the devil folk, he is my patron. You're a warlock to Bill Seacaster? <laughs> In the flesh! <laughs> and there's a lot of us, a great lot of us, who have sworn ourselves to his service. He has seen fit in all of his hellish princedom to grant us spells. What? Well, uh, <laughs> this is incredible. Are you saying that my father is some kind of, uh, like, lord of hell now who can give magic to people in here in the material world? Very recently. Wow. About five months ago, I think he killed some kind of devil prince and, I don't know, ate or consumed some part of his infernal essence, and lo and behold, but it's the best you can tell. I mean, you know, pirates are a superstitious lot, so if word got out that I was a warlock, I mean, they'd string me up for sure. They'd hang me in Gibbity Square. But I'll tell you this right now. Bill is the greatest patron a warlock could ask for. I, I believe it. Uh, I mean, as uh, his maybe first patron. Uh, What's uh, Dippity Square? <laughs> Gibbity. Gibbity. Oh. Gibbity Square. Where the gibbets are. Oh, if you, if you just don't know your way around Leviathan, I'd be happy to show you. <laughs> you know, can I ask you something else, sir? Do you know anything about the Nightmare King? It's <gasps> crown. The Nightmare King? Yeah. No. <laughs> Sounds scary. Though. Scary? Yeah. King of Nightmare? Sounds pretty right, good, yeah. 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 Just yeah. 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 I don't like that one bit. Yeah. What, uh, what is uh, Bill Can I do Seacaster? an inside check and see if he was fucking with us? Sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Show, me, show me some of your warlock spells. Oh, uh, 27. Um, uh, oh, 27? Uh, uh, you uh, do not think he was fucking with you. You think this kid... Listen, being a warlock, it, warlocks are a charisma-based spellcasting class. They are not an intelligence-based spellcasting class. You don't need a lot of smarts to work out a deal. Um, you see, he looks and says, uh, oh, um, I would be um, ha happy to, sh to show you a spell. Um, do, do you think you could front me some money to show you? Oh, you need it as a spell component? Um, no, no, well, um... I pull a, a rock that has been turned into a gold piece out of my jacket of holding. <laughs> he takes it and says, all right, well, I might as well show you what I mean. Yeah, this is, I guess this is worth it. Uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of spell do you want to see? Your favorite. Um, it doesn't mess up the van. My favorite doesn't mess up the van. Oh, all right. Um, you see that he uh, disguises himself as a, uh, a like human uh, pirate woman. Um, you see that it's he's like an extremely overdone like you know. <laughs> He, he looks like a pirate serving girl Halloween costume, you would see. He's got like enormous cleavage and he's like, yo ho, yo ho, I'm a lady. <laughs> Whoa, not bad. The game not recognizes game, welcome all. to the club. Um, he shakes your hand and says, um, 
Could we pull over in this alley real quick? Why? This Why? is getting. Why did you need gold to do a spell? You need, does we Bill see that? Get out of here! Does Bill see that? Does Bill charge you? See, he looks at Riz. Riz, can you repeat what you just said? Do, does Bill Seacaster charge you? Look, it's a better deal because you don't have to sell your soul. That's it's just there's brilliant. A, there's, That's brilliant. You see, he says. So basically, it. Well, here's the thing, right? It's that all the other patrons are always like, your soul, your memories. Or, Bill Seacast is very upfront. It's 25 gold to lease a cantrip for one month. <laughs> all right? And it's 100 gold pieces a month for five. So you, you, if you get it Alistair, involved. Just cantrips? Getting, that's as high as he'll go for? You're getting well, that's ripped the thing. off. No, it's magic. It's magic. And you don't have to give your soul. How much like, money do you have? <laughs> well, I have to get a lot because I don't keep it for very long. What is long. in this alley you want to take us to? Yeah. You see that he reaches into a little satchel You're and he pulls mess. out. He pull, I'm not a mess. <laughs> uh, listen, I was an urchin running around Leviathan and now I know it's magic. <laughs> All right? And I didn't have to give up my soul or nothing. You're right? a bit old Bye. to be an urchin. All right, what's your whole fucking deal? What's your situation? <laughs> I do good magic. Oh, naughty dog! You do good magic. What, did you learn your magic in a book? Yes, I did. Oh, hello, I can read. Hey, well, are we pulling over to rob someone? No. Are okay. you pulling are you... us over so you can rob us? What is in the alley? What is in the alley? I just look, I need over. to do a ritual, and it's better if you do it sooner, because if you forget, it's bad. Why do you, What's the this ritual? is the ritual to pay Bill C. Castor? He pulls out of a satchel a like a, a like leather skin infernal roll of parchment, um, and he pulls it out and unfurls it, and you see an infernal pentagram, sort of hex on it. It looks lined with soot and smoke, um, and you see he says. Basically, when you sign up for your first package of spells, you get one of these, and you sort of have to, you know, when you cast a spell, end of the day or whatever like that, you spread it out, right? And then you put the gold in the middle, you say the incantation, the gold bursts into flame and disappears. Well, I need Do you to have to hire you, other people? That's what I was going like, to say. Is yeah, like, you get, is this an incentive-based thing that you oh, get more MLM? spells oh, you get, you can, other people? You can oh, get upgraded? You can get a tremendous amount of spells yeah. through, through the referral program. Oh. But it's all about, because you actually end up making money right. and spells. You're, kind of a, you're a business owner. <laughs> Yeah, um, in yeah, a very real way, yeah. because Bill's empowered me to take my life into my own hands. Do you host like mimosa brunches where you try and get people to become patrons? I do Bellinis. <laughs> you well, do what? I, mean, I do Bellinis. I, most, a lot of people do mimosas. It's kind of hack at this point. I do Bellinis. Do, oh, <laughs> do we have to? Do we have to stop in a pirate alley to do this, or can you just do it here? Well, I, yeah, I have to spread it over the seat in the van, and I'll... I'm just worried about getting killed or robbed. All right, I'm gonna pull over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna case the alley like a German Shepherd, make sure no one comes after this. What? Do you do you have any conversations with Bill Seacaster? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say if you can uh, talk to your dad. Can we just leave papa. this guy? Can we just drive off? Well, well, you know, if I tell the other followers of old Bill, you, you, uh, Master Seacaster, Lord Seacaster, you'll have an army at your beck and call. I mean, I'll have an army at my beck and call. Do I mean, you need an army? Uh, well, you I mean, oh, who, oh, what would you turn down you an army? One guy. I would take an army over anything. I don't think I would be good at armies. All right, well, I think I would be great at armies. Okay, um, I don't, I and you think might you'd be killer at armies. Oh my God, thank you I so think much. anyone who says, I'm good at armies, <laughs> wouldn't be good at armies. I okay. Right. Adam is the best at armies. Yeah. Can we all agree. And please, you bite glass, all right? You know, you every- bite glass. No. You bite glass. No, you bite glass. Yes. I was being real. Hey, I heard this hey story. guys. I wish I had I think we lost, we lost our minds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we go to McGrady? Uh, What's this yeah, person's you know, name? You know where um, Gardy O'Brien is. Gardy O'Brien. Right? Right. Yeah. So why don't we stop for a second so that Alistair doesn't lose their soul here? No, uh, you don't lose your soul. There's no soul stuff with Bill. It would just be a financial incentive for the other warlocks to find and kill me. Great. Let's right. pull over. Yeah, let's pull <laughs> okay. over. We'll let you do your business. Great. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Um, you just pull over. He gets, he goes in this little alley. He's like, he, little tiefling tail whisking around. And he's got his hooves. <laughs> kneels down, spreads the thing open, spreads his, his little infernal, like, skin-stitched pentagram open. Reaches in, and you see he's going, like, he takes out a couple of gold and then some silver. And then you see he's, like, scrounging for copper pieces. Seven... It's kind I'd... of cute. I think we should adopt him. Oh, no. How much do you need? Um, just two silver and five copper and, we're, and I'm settled. Can yeah. I take those out of my coat? It's yeah. less than ten gold pieces. Absolutely. You hand it to him, he puts it in, and he says, his eyes go red, and he says, Greatest pirate who ever lived or died, scourge of the nine hells and captain of the infernal waste, this should cover my use of minor image today and also a disguise self spell. Hopefully that's settled. Uh, you see that the gold uh, disappears in an eruption of flame. Soot scatters across the alley, partially covering Alistair. He sort of wipes himself off. He rolls the thing up, slides it into his thing. Right, so we're all settled in. Great, great. Let's find Guardy O'Brien. Let's yeah. take a stick, Guardy. Uh, he says, great, got here, Brian. Um, so uh, you guys uh, get in the van. Um, this Leviathan doesn't have too many carts or animals. So you see, uh, uh, Alistair says, the, the uh, Leviathan's going to be more easily traversable on foot at certain points. But um, if you'd like, I could, uh, you, you know, maybe we like park the van somewhere. Or we could also go the long way around to get to the gardens, but you'd have to go under into the cannon court or you'd have to go round to try and get to, um, uh, what would it be? You, the, you, could, you could, he could try to go through the stern wood, but I don't recommend it. Why don't we, should we just send the van out into the sea away from this and then have it come back to pick us up? Um, Are we like pretty high up? Would it just like fall off a cliff? Yeah. Van, can you fly? Oh. Mm. Can the van fly? I don't know that it can I fly. So. I don't think it can. Fabian, do you know if there's can any I? sort of Wait. parking lot situation? Oh, I definitely don't think there's any sort of parking lot situation. I'm, I'm sure that's a nicer part of town that the van might be. It was oh, all pirates. Uh, I'm can really we, can we not sure. It? Maybe we yeah. can, leave our, can we leave our hirelings with it? And yes. Sarah can always fly back with, on the Griffin if there's trouble? Sarah Lynn, would you, or Sandra Lynn? Uh, you see that uh, Sandra says, I think that might be a, a wise course of action. Um, uh, I and Baxter can stay here along with Galir, and it sounds like Cathilda maybe shouldn't be seen walking mm -hmm. around. Although Cathilda, if someone does try to come, shows who she really is, and then they'll be scared away. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see, uh, uh, she nods. Um, Rog, uh, Rog and Tracker both look and say, should we come with you guys, or should we uh, uh, stay here with the van just to make sure it's safe? Like they roll with? Yeah, yeah. come with us. Can I try something? Uh, you you can talk. How do you talk to your motorcycle when he's not there? Uh, through, I, I guess, some version of a, an attuned message spell is my best guess. Oh, I will. Hey, Van? Yeah. I'm going to try to reach you with my mind later. We'll see how that goes. Okay, that sounds so good, dude. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Um, you guys head off on foot. Alistair starts leading you around. Um, as you guys begin to journey through Leviathan, um, you guys see uh, that the fog begins to clear as the sun comes out. Uh, you begin to walk through the neighborhood away from Maelstrom's Maw, which is called Four Castles. Alistair starts to describe it to you. Four Castles is raised up higher than a lot of the city, and as the fog parts under the sunlight, you guys begin to see the actual bulk of Leviathan. You guys can take wow. one. Oh, yes. oh, maps, maps, maps. Maps, maps, maps. Maps, maps, maps. Homeboy's out here making maps. Um, gorgeous. Um, so cool. Hoop city. <laughs> um, My God. Uh, 
You guys see the fast bug of Leviathan. There is a huge central mass that is like a skyscraper in the middle of the city with a whole neighborhood up in the rigging up above it. Um, sort of the nicer parts of the city are on the other side from where you are right now. The neighborhood you're going through, you hear like shouts of violence in the distance and can smell smoke. Alistair begins to bring you through here, um, basically saying like, uh, well, the place that we're in right now is called Four Castles, and this is where a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of fighting that goes on here for control of these neighborhoods. I get it, it's a pun. What's that? It's a pun. Well, there's Four Castles. Yeah, it's the, the folk store. What? It's a pun. It's a shit pun. Oh! <laughs> well, congratulations! <laughs> Alistair! Can I ask you about <laughs> the Sternwood? Why wouldn't we want to go through the Sternwood? Oh, the Sternwood's full of beasts and other various terrible things. There was a, a time where people thought that Leviathan shouldn't steal as much and should make its own food, so a group of sea druids tried to make a place where it would be arable ground and such, and a whole terrible forest grew and it's cursed and full of monsters, so I would avoid it. That sounds Whoa. awesome. Mm. Honestly, yeah, sounds cool. A dark forest? I mean, we're going I'm... to another forest soon. Might be good to get some forest prep. I was prep kind of thinking We don't need that. forest prep. We need to find Guardian Prime. Prep. We're Maybe all about Guardian Prime. Something yeah, to think yeah, about for later. So forest prep. We're not just going to swing <laughs> by a cursed well, forest. Why don't we get out of here? Because if we go straight down into the mess, we'll actually be going through Cannon Court, which is a little bit more of a safer place. Okay. okay. Great. Uh, um, so Alistair leads you uh, effortlessly through this side of Leviathan. Can I peek you go down the Sternwood, just to the cursed forest, just see what I might see? Uh, a forest growing out of the debris and rot of shipwrecks. It is every tree is more twisted and cursed than the last. A lot of them naturally, the trees just form into skulls growing out of the wood. Uh, there's a, uh, you also just can hear weird cawing of crows and other carrion just birds. Just hanging on the fig. <laughs> can, can I <laughs> roll walking, to see right. if there's anything in there that's like nightmare adjacent? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, I'm still what is that? for nightmare adjacent seven. things. <laughs> uh, seven. You do not find. Uh, uh, seven doesn't show you anything. Okay, actually, through. can I cast clairvoyance and send an orb into the forest? <laughs> you cast clairvoyance. <laughs> you see that. Um, I'm looking for a crown. <laughs> um, you look into a forest. This could all be over. <laughs> what? We just break it. I love making mysteries for you guys because it's like, hey, we're going to a forest. This also a forest. <laughs> it's like trying to solve a murder by trying to solve a different murder. It's it like, you know what? A lot of people get killed in Chicago. We should go to Chicago. But they died in Seattle. But, but murder. Think about it. Solving this Rubik's Cube, Rubik's Cube, colors, colors this box of crayons. Yeah. Let's all about connections, man. The human I, brain is all about connections. I genuinely just want to see some cool shit. <laughs> so, can we just tree. like watch the clairvoyance cool. orb like it's Netflix? Now, um, you guys go down to Cannon Court. Um, Cannon Court is weirdly a like subterranean neighborhood, but it's subterranean in a place that's not made of natural stone, but artificially created ships. So uh, you see that this is weirdly a uh, neighborhood that is modeled like a dwarven city would be, where there are like subterranean areas shaped out of old shipwrecks, but built as like civic spaces, like the way that dwarves build like large public caverns and chambers under things. So you're walking through the like hollowed out hulls of ships that have like dwarven gunpowder markets. You see there are these sort of pirate dwarves and gnomes around who are pinching things out of barrels and like eating little bits of gunpowder. You guys get weird fucking looks as you walk through here, by the way. A group of just like Salesian teens in like non-pirate garb. Um, ahoy! Great ahoy. This is the safer part of town? Oh yeah, if you're up in four castles in the wrong part of there, you'll get killed just for walking down the street. Isn't that where we parked our van? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, well, boy. Um, uh, you find Galeer's there. Um, oh no! <laughs> Clear. Do any of you have any 24-hour protection spells that you could cast on? I have nothing. I mean, there's there's they're fine. They're fine. The there's a griffin there. Greater invisibility lasts a minute, so I could <laughs> keep protecting for that long. Uh. Um, uh, you guys continue along through the cannon court. Go ahead and give me a group charisma check as you travel. Oh boy. 
and group charisma. That's going to be a 23 from Fig. That's a four for your boy. Oh, 25. An eight. A 10. Charisma saving throw or charisma check? Check. Uh, 15. OK. Four out of the six got higher than a 10. Yeah. Cool. I'm saying hi to too many people. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Good um, day. Uh, actually, I'm gonna say Riz, as you walk along, oh, no. you Great. see that uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a dwarf with a huge double bearded, a double braided beard, uh, with firecrackers all through it, uh, who's got huge anchors on each arm. Um, as you're walking along, you see he grabs you and goes, "In the wrong part of town, Gobby." I uh, look at eat dwarf flesh, are you? No, no, Takes no, no, a no, no. flintlock pistol out. Open your mouth if you're hungry. I disguise myself as him and I say, stay away. As <laughs> him? Yeah. You disguise yourself as the dwarf doing this? Say I come away. up and go, you're you're dead. You've been dead for I days. I already ate You've you. You've been freaking dead this whole time. I already ate you, man. No, 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 no. We're not going to move past it. I'm not going to move I'm not going to move past it. Past it. Past it. Your first thought to get this kind of stop was to be him? Him as well? Yeah. I, am I, and this, is it just me? I, is anyone around? Say, I, I got it from me. here. I okay. wanted to be, I wanted to be someone of this, of this world and he's the first person I've really <laughs> met. The logic uh, is sound. Okay, <laughs> all right, you say yourself as him. You say you've been dead. You've been dead for Go days. ahead and give me a, a deception roll. What about me? Actually, yeah, if you you give me a deception roll, if you beat a 10, it'll give a help action. Well, here. I already have advantage. Yeah. Okay, you already have advantage. Yeah, give me the advantage roll. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a 25. <laughs> They're superstitious bugs. <laughs> What's this uh, dwarf with firecrackers in his beard gonna do about that? <sighs> really? I already hate you, man. You, already you, you, you see he looks at you saying, you've already been dead. <laughs> looks at him, what does Fig do disguised as him when Kristen says, you've been dead? Let this life go. <laughs> He turns, sprints <laughs> through the marketplace. There is a porthole overlooking the side of the city, like a giant like glass porthole. He dives <laughs> through it and kills himself. Screams, falls into the ocean, dead. I know, I cast. Uh, Wait, no, he was bad. He was he gonna was kill bad. me for being a goblin. Don't save his I, life. Are you He's sure? bad and racist. He's Killing awful. people here is normal he was and bad. cool. <laughs> All right. That was fine. I jump in after. Yeah, no, I tackle no, you. I tackle no, you before I, you do. I jump in after. No, I, tackle I tackle you. you. See, Tracker grabs you two and goes, Babe, babe, I know your family's super racist. You're projecting. This is about your no, shit. No, I just. This is I about your shit. No. That's a he, racist bad he pirate. Put a he's good in my mouth dead. and said, Are you hungry? Exactly. <laughs> he called him a gobby. <laughs> okay, okay, you're right, you're right. Babe, it's all right. It's okay. That person was not my parents. No. Yeah, that person was not my parents, and neither am I. Okay. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a crazy 30 seconds. We've been, Riz, we've walked about five feet into the south. do you maybe want to walk on the inside? I can stand yeah. on the outside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys are realizing you are extremely not in your progressive homeland. I pull a tricorn hat out of my coat. <laughs> you pull a tricorn? So you look in your prep school uniform, but you have a tricorn no, hat. a jacket and a tricorn hat, which is much more regular. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Um, I'm just gonna keep on this this man's as my disguise. Cool. You guys continue to walk through Cannon Court. Um, uh, I cast light on my tie dye shirt so it glows. <laughs> just glowing. You see, Alistair says, "Wow, well, you guys are a whole lot." <laughs> All right. Let's go, baby. Buddy, let's let's keep find going. your beef. <laughs> um, you head through the rest of Cannon uh, Court, and you emerge from underground. Um, in the neighborhood of Galliard. Um, you look out and see, again, the huge, spiring, craggy shipwrecks of Leviathan all around you. Gulls, you see there's also like Aarakocra flying around way up, like skyscrapers length up above you. Uh, Leviathan is like 
filled with like the incredible wealth of all these different seafaring, different ships and different makes and stuff like that. The nicer neighborhoods further away, you can see, tend to have actual buildings built on them. So like the ships have been flattened or like had wooden platforms put on them. So there's like flat and level neighborhoods. Whereas like the jankier parts of town are like literally built into like diagonal rounded ships hulls and things like that. Um, you uh, walk through Galliard, uh, and as the late afternoon sun begins to fill the city with golden red light, and you see people come out sort of, uh, this place is sort of chaos, by the way. You hear laughter, occasional pistol shots at, there's just drunkards who have openly soiled themselves sleeping in the street in a lot of places. Galliard is sort of the heart of the city, so it's the big like party neighborhood, it's the downtown. Uh, you see that there's a lot of that kind of New Orleans architecture of like external second story balconies where people are like waving to each other in the street and drinking a lot of public houses here. You begin to approach uh, a place that is not just one building, but you see instead it is like coracles and frigates and schooners and junks that have been turned into a like renovated campus of theaters, casinos, brothels, like all these buildings that have formed this hub of places to go and lose the money you just got as a pirate. Uh, and as you open the door, you see the liveliest show of your life starts up. Uh, you see that there are pirates all around in various corners. There is a giant barrel of ale that is just pouring into someone's mouth. Uh, people laughing, <laughs> someone fiddling over in the corner. Um, and you see that there are huge alabaster hookahs all around here that people are enjoying as they talk to themselves. Um, Alistair, as he approaches, looks at you and says, Right, so welcome to the Gold Gardens. Uh, this is sort of the place. <laughs> um, uh, do you know Garty O'Brien? He's a friend of my father's. Oh, well, in that case, you see, they're right over there. Uh, you see, he points over to uh, uh, the corner where you see there's like kind of the owner's table vibe. Um, over in the corner, you guys see what must be Gardy O'Brien. Uh, they are a tall, muscular, half-orc Azamar. They are shirtless with a few accents of thin line geometric tattoo work around their wrists and biceps, as well as some floral tattoos on their midsection. Uh, they wear no shirt, but elaborate fabric heavy harem pants and fine boots with like a myriad of like belts and straps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, their head is shaved at the sides and back with a flop of black hair on top. Um, you can tell that they're Azamar because uh, both their pupils and the whites of their eyes are black. So like the external and interior of their eyes are black. The irises are shimmering metallic gold. So it's like a black halo superimposed on a jet black eye. You say half elf or half? Half uh, half, half or, or half uh, uh, so they're like they're like a celestial heritage half work. Um, Damn. Uh, Damn is right. Yeah. Uh, they, they also have accented that by, they have a little accent of like metallic silver makeup on their lips and a little around their eyes. Um, you see uh, near them, they're talking to a bunch of other people that are working here. Um, anyone else here can also make perception checks or insight checks if you want. Yeah. 13. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Um, uh, 21 is good, so you see, uh, so you see a couple things. Number one, um, they have immediately clocked all of you and you can see that they have a concentration spell on. Um, you also- On themselves or on us? Uh, uh, they're just holding concentration on the spell. Um, uh, you see that they have a massive two-handed scimitar behind them that has a lot of like gold rings sort of stamped into the back of the blade. So like as it curves, there's the sharp edge on the curve mm -hmm. and there are gold rings jangling on the back of it. Um, you also see that, uh, uh, shout out to Pete the Plug, uh, they have uh, scars uh, on their chest uh, as though they have uh, uh, gotten some kind of surgery 
uh, that they have like disguised a little bit with some like of those geometric celestial tattoos. Um, you see Gardy O'Brien uh, look over at all of you as you approach uh, and smile uh, and beckons you over to their table. I oh. bow with my, my tricone hat. Uh, you see uh, Gardy uh, leans back. They look just so languid and comfortable. Uh, you see they go, I love thee, Alistair, my darling boy. Come here for a moment. Uh, you see Alistair says, oh, Gary O'Brien knows my name. <laughs> see, the spells are worth it. You pay for the spells and then people start to know your name. Um, uh, you see uh, Alistair walks over to Gardy and uh, Gardy gives them a familiar sort of squeeze on the arm uh, and then looks up at the rest of you. Well, well, well. Welcome one and all to the Gold Gardens. If I can be of any service at all, I trust that you will let me know, lass. Serve alcohol here? Oh, you darling. We serve far more than alcohol. We serve snuff powder, dragon spice, whatever you could desire. What's a dragon spice do to you? Dragon spice is snuff powder cut with pure ketamine. Oh. I'll take a dragon spice. As I say that, I shake my head and come and stop being a goblin and become fig again. Um, you see, <laughs> uh, I figure out fig. They look over at you and go, "Oh, well, it seems that we have uh, some more like young Alistair here." Now, if I didn't know better, I would say I was looking at a group of Silesian teens. Well, we're far more than that. I'm sure you. Know me. Oh, darling, I would know you anywhere. Young Fabian Aramaeus Seacaster. Thank God you've got your mother's looks, my boy. What is that? Is it some kind of dig at my father's looks? Because I particularly, I believe my father was a very handsome man, and I would be lucky to have his features if I had gotten them. God, he's dead, dude. You have to suck up to him. <laughs> I'm, all right, I love Fabian. my papa. Nobody, nobody. Yes. Fabian, quit saying you love your papa. Yeah. You're, you're, my papa. you're allowed to look up to your dad without thinking he's super. I grab the biggest I beer nearby and no. just take a big <laughs> sip. Uh, so much uh, beer. <laughs> <laughs> Is this mean? We got a uh, you see, pirates, you see, uh, they just look at you and say, "Well, no, yes, that is me, but also, darling, it's not yours." Whose is it? Who are you drinking? Um, <laughs> you see. Um, a, hold on a second. Uh, give me a luck check to see whose mead you just grabbed. That's a three. <gasps> I'm, li I'm really cash, I'm leaning kind of back a little bit as I chug this giant mead. Um, you, it's very uh, sweet. you grab this mead. I'm proud of it. Can I'm I? proud of the choices I've made. You see, Turning around from the bar, you see a glaring, terrifying presence turn around. Uh, you see that a six and a half foot tall mind flare turns around. You know what a mind flare is? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You uh, do? Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> the, a mind flare, for those that don't know, is an underdark humanoid. Um, they uh, have a squid-like face with like beady eyes and tentacles that come out of the bottom of their heads. So you can't see the beak underneath. Uh, they eat brains. That's what they do. Um, this uh, this they eat brains, but also drink beer. Uh, this mind flare turns around and is wearing a bright scarlet coat, blue shirt. Uh, a like intense looking crystalline saber at their side. And those... Don't drink that, drink this. Um, <laughs> I pull a 10 gold, ten, uh, gold piece worth of uh, mead bottle hit a chino. out of the... Yeah, <laughs> I <laughs> hit a uh, give me a persuasion with disadvantage. Oh, oh. no. Um, I, I give the help actually, action. I'm gonna use my divination roll, uh, and so I get a 16. You get a 16? Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, awesome. Um, 
you... Oh, how does portent work with disadvantage? Yeah, I guess that works. Uh, you get a 16. Uh, what uh, What does that get to with your persuasion? It's I, I, it's a 15, which I added. Plus one, two. Yeah. Um, I don't have hype. Um, you see that this... Uh, Illithid Mind Flayer captain turns around uh, and the entire bar goes silent. Well, I see you've helped yourself to a drink there, lass. Oh. Uh, oh! <laughs> I just, I lean so far back that you, I'm almost laying on the ground of this bar. That's so cool. I thought maybe these were on the counter to grab, like, uh, I thought, uh. Oh, are things here in the bar just for grabbing? And you see that amongst his face tentacles, there is one little tentacle that is a peg leg. It's like a wooden one. Um, see? Uh, and that one he uses to caress your face. Uh, and you see that Tracker, uh, you see he goes, well, I, and Tracker goes, under no circumstances, and swats his tentacle <laughs> away. 30 people at the bar draw swords. Shing! Um, you see, Guardy stands up and they say, Ura, everyone's being, frankly, and I do hate to use harsh language, ridiculous. I'm going to need all of you to kindly abscond. You've drawn weapons here. So if you're drawing weapons and you see that they reach back and grab their scimitar, then I will have to draw weapons as well. So how do we want to play it? Lads and lasses, how do we feel? Um, uh, you see that uh, the Illithid turns to look at you, turns to look at you and says, I wouldn't a drink in the same bar as the son of a coward. You're talking, you're talking to me? C. Costa died on land. He died more than a hundred miles from the sea. He's come here to tell those of Leviathan how to live their lives. I say, Bill C. Caster was a scurvy dog. Uh, give me an intelligence check. Okay. Uh, Twelve. Uh, you know this man. Uh, this is the captain of the Crimson Claw. This is uh, an illithid pirate who your father fought with time and again uh, during his life. Uh, this is a Captain James Whitlaw. He looks at you and says, I, I see this. Your father was no true pirate when he made his fortune. He turned and ran, dragging the hangman out of the sea. I've come back to Leviathan to let it be known there will be a new order. Do you have anything to say about that landlubber? I'm no landlubber. My father is the greatest pirate that ever lived. You, James, are the captain of a two-bit piece of shit stick of wood that dare never sail again. You've come here to make a fool of yourself, and I personally consider myself lucky that I will have the pleasure of laughing along with the rest of Leviathan. And I kick him in his fucking chest. <laughs> Ahoy! 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 I'm down the moon. <laughs> um, uh, incredible. Um, first of all, go ahead and m make an intimidate check with advantage. Uh, two thirteens for Here an eighteen. Go. Oh, excuse 18. me. Uh, yeah, eighteen. Eighteen. Um, uh, go ahead and make your attack roll to kick him in the chest. Great. Uh, net one. Ooh. Um. <laughs> That is cruel, Fate. You are cruel. That was such a good monologue. A 
Can I? You uh, Fabian's ability to fall on his face after saying something cool. Can I throw Fabian in the air? <laughs> just to make him do acrobatics? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say make a, you wanna throw him in the air? Just to give him the acrobatics to maybe like redirect something. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, since you've rolled a nat one, uh, Gorgog attempts to throw you in the air. Go ahead, you, you're gonna need a 25 acrobatics to do something here. I need a 25? In order to, to can extemporaneously- I a, Can I do a strength check? Sure, give me a, a DC 25 athletics. Can I go to a rage and just throw it? <laughs> Cool, go to your rage. If you don't hit a 25 here, something even worse is gonna happen for you trying something. Hell yeah. Okay. Oops. Oh. It's cocked. Cox Nat 20. 26. <laughs> okay, you may roll this attack with advantage. Oh, God. Uh, that is a 19. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. A 19. You do not collapse and fall into a pile. A 19 does not hit. You see that you go to kick for his chest, um, and Gorgug like slams into your back to send you forward. Uh, you see that uh, as you go, uh, uh, your foot comes up, and uh, James grabs your foot, pulls you towards him, gets in close, and for a second, all you see is beak and tentacles splaying out, coming right for your face, and you hear probably would sound like 10 or 20 of Guardi's voices at, this, at the same time, this like susurrus of voices. And they say, enough! Boom! And uh, there is a blast of air. Everyone is knocked on their ass. Uh, uh, you see that Guardi stands up and they say, all right, loves, that's the end of the party. Captain James, you and your friends have drawn steel. You know, that's against the rules, mate. So. Off you toddle. Um, James looks at you. Uh, you. You have ended in a draw here where no one was cut, no, no actual blows were exchanged. Um, uh, he looks at you and says, It's not over, boy. Oh, not at all. Uh, Captain James and his crew exit. Uh, See you, James. <laughs> Bye, James. Nice to meet you. Um, Can I. Uh... Like, like just a little piece of bronze at him and be like, here's for the beer. <laughs> uh, you see that one of his tentacles whips out, grabs it, um, and you say, you see Tracker yells out, I know we're all being glib, but don't fucking touch women without their permission. <laughs> um, and you see that uh, as the pirates leave, uh, Tracker looks over you and says, I don't give a fuck if we're in a pirate city. We're just gonna, I'm, no, we're going. Yeah, no one's touching fuck. my hips and trying to get by at the bar. If okay? I see a no. fucking hand or a hook no. or a fucking no. peg leg go for the small of someone's back, it's you know, on. I say, I say, would you touch a man like that? Men yeah. aren't walking around touching the smalls of each other's backs to get around, no. You guys you just need to get around. hellish rebuke because literally anytime someone touches me, I just spit flames. <gasps> um, so I really, like that. Uh, yeah. You see Guardy snaps their fingers uh, and the music kicks up again. Um, Guardy looks over and they say, well, that was a little bit of a party we almost threw for ourselves, wasn't it? You certainly have some spark. I mean, I, yeah, I'm my father's son, through and through. Well, I understand that your father passed away. Yes. I'm very sorry to hear that. I killed him. I heard that as well. I didn't know the man as a true close and personal friend, but I can't help but think that's how he would have wanted to go. So, lovies, what brings us to Leviathan and the Gold Gardens? We were actually hoping to speak to you. Speak yeah. away. We... Um, is there anywhere we can speak to you in private? Absolutely. The Gold's Gardens are home to all sorts of... Would you like to play some cards, take in a show, smoke some hookah? I think we're just looking for just... privacy so we can have some words. Yeah, we just wanted to talk to you about any... Okay, well I'd like some hookah. So I'm going to go to a <laughs> okay. hookah. I would like some more <clears throat> weed. <laughs> Absolutely. This I'm... time I can buy it. 
Darling, of course. You see that... I uh, will take the dragon spice. Uh, you see that they snap their fingers, some dragon spice, and some mead come over. Uh, and they lead you guys into this plush, lovely little uh, hookah lounge in this, like, it, it's effectively like a pirate Moulin Rouge, like a multi-building, yeah. like, <laughs> entertainment, <laughs> gambling, <laughs> sex work. There's, you see there's like some health and well, you see like there's sort of crusty old pirates getting like massages and acupuncture over in a corner. Uh, this place looks like the, the fucking best. Um, they lead you into this hookah area uh, uh, and sit down and go, son, loves, you've come all this way and I can't help but notice that you're coming with young Mr. Arsh here. And you see that Alistair nods um, and you see, he says, so you've heard that your father has not truly abandoned the city of Leviathan. I'm sorry, uh, what, uh, what, how do you figure? Well, uh, his acolytes and followers are still very present. Oh, that's right. Though they are extremely destitute. It doesn't seem like a good situation. Uh, Alistair says, I think it's great. I really like it. I mean, intel intellectually, yes, it's very fun. I enjoy the idea of it, but I worry about the followers getting caught in some sort of trap. If any of you are interested, I have a small presentation. Do we get anything if we watch the small presentation, regardless of whether we join or not? A Bellini. <laughs> yes, you do get one Bellini, but if I could, um, I would need one of you to front the money for me to be able to go buy the Bellinis. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> we'll do that later at yeah. some point. Uh, uh, what? Oh. Guardy looks up and says, uh, so, you understand that Leviathan is in a precarious situation. I think our friend Captain James, who arrived here only this morning, wants to undo some of what the late great Bill Seacaster did when he was the terror of the Celestine Sea. What precisely did Bill Seacaster do? Just his, his presence, his name, his reputation, James wants to undo? I believe I'm sure if what James was saying is true, he means to. My father uh, was, you know, as much as he believed in the nature of captainship and the whole captain and crew and no democracy sort of thing, uh, was not a fan of the idea of a pirate king. Um, and I guess there was one before, but then my father came and killed him and then was like, never again. Um, so as far as I understand, there hasn't been a pirate king in Leviathan since my father. Uh, but if you get a chance, it's sort of touristy, but you could head over to Gibberty Square and see the old pirate king's head which has been artificially preserved with magic, stabbed through the tongue with a dagger and hangs from the mast in the center of Gibbety Square. Gibbety with a, Square? Gibbety Square? Gibbety. Oh. With a sign hanging from it that says, no kings for a captain. <laughs> That's my papa. Oh. That's what? touristy? Very tourist. It's like, oh, let's go to Gibbety Square and take in the side. It's in the I mean, Rick's theme. We're tourists. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to apologize for wanting to, to go to the city. <gasps> we're travelers. We're not tourists. <laughs> I'm kind of a we're tourist. We're adventurers. <laughs> we're not here. We're, we're adventurers. What were you an meeting with Bill Seacaster about in the Hotel Cavalier? Oh, I see that you know a little more of my business than I had anticipated at first. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm so drunk. I'm, I'm a two thirds of the way through this second mean. <laughs> mean is so strong. It's stronger than wine. It just tastes like I'm just drinking, drinking it. honey. <laughs> Dragger goes, babe, are you okay? I think I'm more than okay. <laughs> um, you see that they look at you and go, um, so I was supplying your father with palimpsests. Mm. I trade in uh, a lot of fine goods and especially those that are magical in nature so i was able to provide captain seacaster with a certain measure of palimpsests as well as other gems and artifacts of the like i had a regular meeting with him the last time i went to bastion city there was uh how do you say it well 
we had always scheduled so that I would go to the room, it was a secret compartment, I would drop it there, he would come in, because part of his general amnesty with Solis was that he couldn't be seen with any active pirates. So we had to work that out, right? Now, the last time I went, the staff had all changed up. Different people were working there. And I made the drop and the staff came and said to me basically, you know, hey, we need to uh, work something out here because Bill's not coming. And I said, likely story, I'm gonna fuck off and not have anything to do with this. And then they all transformed into demons and I saw mm, yes. they took a velvet pouch of mine that had some uh, goods that I was selling uh, uh, to some other buyers and also some things I had bought to bring back here. Gems? Gems, gems that's right. Do you ever get gems from the red waste? Um, you see he says, from the red waste? Yeah. Um, no, not particularly. I mean, occasionally, but you know, not, not as a rule. Do you know anything about the shadow cat? Shadowcat. Kalina? I don't know the name Kalina, darling, but the name Shadowcat does ring a bell. Um, Can, I see Can I show the picture? Uh, you show them the picture, uh, you see they look at it and go, just a rather cute goblin holding on to nobody. Mm. Can I do an picture. inside check to see if they're... Sure. Like they're telling me they call their dad cute. It's, is there any way to tell if what spell someone is concentrating on without actually casting um, magic? I can cast Detect Magic as a ritual. It'll take us 10 minutes and it'll be obvious that I'm sitting here casting yeah. a ritual spell. Um, anyone that wants to can give uh, a... I can do an Arcana check. Yeah, give me an Arcana check. I have 26 on my insight into them. 14. Cool. Um, uh, 14. Um, you think that they are maintaining concentration on detect evil and good. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, that they're just trying, that they just hang out in the bar and keep an eye on for Right. Right. Um, I, I, did I, you have um, the gems that you've lost? Did you have a celestial trapped in one of them? I did. It was a rare find. I was bringing it back. Cool. Interesting. I have a question. Wow. We've been learning hey, about that. Have, cool. have you ever encountered a gem in all of your gem dealing that looks clouded over. Clouded over? Mm. Some gems have imperfections or flaws, small cracks inside that make a sort of cloudy look, but... No, something like this. Uh, you see their eyes go wide. Those golden irises literally like rotate. Uh, and they look and say, oh dear, that's a flawless ruby. May I? You can touch it while it's in my hand. Cautious. Touches it. Darling, that's holding onto a powerful fiend, I have you know. Yeah, it's my dad. Oh, lovely. I'm so sorry. How long has your pa been in there? A couple days. Oh. Yeah, we have a relationship, yeah. But well, uh, it's all clouded over, isn't it? You see, they look and, um, hold on one second. Um, they nod and say, the, the demons were trying to grab gems there. I think, honestly, when, in my escape, I think they had set up at the Hotel Cavalier because they had found some clue that I was going to be there. So they were trying to find their way to get a hold of these gems like that. So the one they were most excited about was that one, but they couldn't use it because it already had a celestial bound into it. So they, it was rubbish by the time they got it, right? Any of the gems that were empty in my pouch weren't big enough for what they were looking to bind. So they had to start looking further afield. These demons, by the way, were... They, they hadn't gotten to the prime material by honest means, they'd been summoned and bound here. And detecting what I could, I mean, I'm not, you know, a studied magician by any means, but they had sort of a, what would you call it? The summons that had been placed on them had been there for hundreds of years. They were fulfilling some debt or obligation to a being capable of binding 
an extra plane of being for centuries. The, the crown of the Nightmare King can do that. Yeah. What'd you say, the crown of the Nightmare King? Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the Nightmare King? It passed through the Gold Gardens not long ago. What? When? I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, the crown the nightmare or the King? Nightmare King? Not the Nightmare King, darling. That would the have crown. been an apocalypse. I mean, if the Nightmare King were... Somebody had the crown and was here? Where did it go to? An elven woman came through the Golden Gardens. Uh, was it this woman? I show a picture of my mom. Lovely, it was. <laughs> Do you know her? Uh, yeah, we've met. Ah. Oh. Family can be challenging, mm. that's for sure. Well... But also, I don't trust the night making to not create something that looks like my mother to mess with us. She came here with the crown uh, after... She came here with the crown to have some curse breaking done on it. I'm a bit of a touch with curse breaking, just naturally. Um, I handled that for her and she had put some sort of nice tools aura on it and so I didn't know what I was breaking a curse on until after I'd broken it and after that point I said you had to get that out of my fucking place of business what post haste. What kind of curse were you breaking? A curse placed on her. Um, it, it, the, the, the Crown of the Nightmare King is a powerful talisman, yeah? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, she had been fighting a curse that had been put on her just by handling the crown to begin with. Oh. And by breaking that curse, she was able to handle it more freely. Hmm. Did you, do you know where she went? After she came here, well, she talked about... She was frustrated that she couldn't uh, get to where she was trying to get to by honest means. I don't think she could teleport there because she had never been there before and didn't have a description of it. Mm. Has, has she been to Fallon Yeah, she's, That's from she's from Fallon Yeah. Okay. So maybe it was the, the forest. So she's, uh, so she's like not she... headed towards Eowyn. Did she say anything about like her kids or anything like that? I didn't ask. Mm -hmm. People come here to get away from family for the most part. Could you... So when you say you break, you can naturally break curses. Could you? Do you think you can break the curse on that ruby? It's got. It's sort of a trap, I guess. But we were just wondering. Um, they look at it and come up with the same conclusion that Kristen came up with, which is that there's no way to break it without getting to the contingency inside of it that's going to destroy Gorthalax. What does it feel like for him to be in here? <sighs> well. Um, I could tell you a very sweet lie, which is more my style. I put my arm around the fake. I'm giving it the truth. It probably hurts a great deal. But if your paw is as powerful as he feels, I imagine that pain is not something that he is uh, unable to withstand, darling. He is from the Nine Hells, after all. Pain's kind of their thing. Um, this is uh, sort of a change of subject that as the gears are turning my brain, I'm Rude. worried that people are going to get mad at me when I say it out loud, but um, uh, what, what's going on with your tattoos? <laughs> I was actually thinking that as well. They're beautiful. Oh, darling, thank you. I do like them. Well, they're uh, the tattoos in Celestial, um, they mean something. You know, I, uh, I'm descended from the Zajiri. Do you know what that is? Zajiri, hmm, no. So it's kind of funny, yeah, because there are, the, there are the gods of the upper planes, Helio and the like, and those gods have attendant angels and such, beings that serve them, and then they often have fiends 
that live in the lower planes that oppose them. But it's kind of funny, right, because the fiends are actually a part of the same pantheon, yeah? They're a part of that belief system. So in a weird way, even though they're opposed, they are in a similar faction, yeah? It's like the devils of the nine hells that are fallen angels of Helio aren't the servants of dark gods. They are actually just opposition to the gods of light. Now, what most people don't know is that the same is true of the gods of darkness. So the orcs, yeah, have their god, uh, god of, you know, Grumsh one-eye, god of slaughter, right? And Grumsh has his attendant servants, yeah? But there are actually celestials that exist like fiends in opposition <laughs> to that dark god. Um, are any of the celestials fallen from Grumsh? Yes, my ancestors. The Zajiri are the reverse of a fallen angel. We're like... Um, a risen devil? A risen devil, you might say. <laughs> my ancestors, the Zajiri represent in the Orcish belief system, which is all about war and stuff like that. It's really sharp leaves. Really? Yeah, I, get, I, I died once. Um, uh, you see that they point to the floral tattoos on their side and there's some sharp leaf designs there. Uh, they look and say, basically, the Zajiri represent everything in life that is soft and beautiful and wonderful, things that are pleasing and pleasurable, right? Um, but they represent that in a bad way, that it's temptation, yeah? So the Zajiri are kind of like holy succubi. The job is to fuck people into being decent. Basically. Oh, wow. cool! Wow, huh. that's a job I would about watch that. A show about that. That's cool. So, did the you had a gem with a celestial in it? <coughs> yes, that's right. And was that celestial an evil being? Was that celestial an evil being? No, that no. celestial was not an evil being. Okay. Uh, that celestial's name, I believe, was Zathriel. Um, they were a celestial of hanging out and having chill time. Okay. They were a so planetar, right? Sure. Yes, that's right, yeah, absolutely. What is a planetar? A planetar is second in the angelic order underneath the solar. Cool. A little bit of cosmology. <sighs> so, you've come here chasing the crown of the Nightmare King, yeah? I have a question. Is the, wait. Is, would the Nightmare King have like a, a risen devil equivalent of it? Or that's more like, we don't know where it's even really from, I think. Mm, yeah. Well, that's sort of the issue, isn't it? Is that the Nightmare King is an abomination. It, I mean, he defies categorization, you know. I know that he has in the past allied with demons, which is part of why. And the Shadow Cat says, you haven't encountered this Shadow Cat at all, have you? Um, we have people on yeah. our party who have. We've seen the shadow cat. Okay. Uh, the shadow cat is in this picture, but you can't see it and we can't see it, but some people can and we haven't figured out how yet. I think it's if they've met, if someone's met the shadow cat. But then why would Riz's mom have met the shadow cat? Have you met the shadow cat? Because she worked with my dad. My dad. No, but haven't. why would Sandra Lynn then have met the shadow cat? Because she worked in the Celeste, like people in the, the, that worked in the Celestian Sea had crossed paths possibly with yeah. Shadowcat. I mean, maybe that seems so random. Mm. I think that's what was described last time we talked about it. So, you've come seeking the crown of the Nightmare King. The only thing I can give you is the information that's, you know, um, I effectively was doing business with Bill Seacaster. That alerted these demons to my location. They came finding gems and such. And when they, they needed the gem for some kind of ritual, there was something involving like a sacrifice or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They tried that. They On you? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm, love. I'm okay. Are you sure? Yeah. It was me who did it. And Not then saved him. Accord. The Nightmare King is a... He's bad. Someone came to me in my dreams and controlled me and had me put my own dad in the gem and try and kill my friend. You've been done an awful lot, love. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, if there's any help you need now, what I can't tell you is that 
the woman that I kicked out of here um, made her way back out to a ship in Hullcliff, and I believe that ship may have been bound for Fallon Abbey. Mm. Okay. That makes sense. So perhaps she's trying to free Do you know Aylwin. the name of the ship? Sorry, love, I didn't catch it. Okay. If she had the crown, would that make it easier for her to free Aylwin? I would bet. I mean, who what knows? What lengths to go to, though? I would think she would have diplomatic means to free Aylwin, that she wouldn't need to resort well, to. Well, but they're no longer ambas- He's not. My father isn't an ambassador anymore. Yeah, they're just but... disgraced in Falinel, maybe? Well, we, we could just head that way and see if we... <laughs> So Can what flavor Alistair? hookah is this, by the way? <laughs> What's that? What flavor hookah? Oh, it's peach, mint, cucumber. Whoa. Okay, because there was a lot going on, so it was hard to yeah. guess just one. Yeah, I like, you know, I don't like it too sweet, I'll be honest. Yeah. You I like it a little more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it, you know, I want to, it's like a sort of thing, a puzzle, you know? Keep yeah. it interesting. Okay. I tried the hookah. Alistair is so much. He, <laughs> uh, who he sees in this picture? Um, Alistair looks at the picture, uh, and he says, Oh, right, well, there's a goblin, right? Mm-hmm. Looks kind of like you. That's nice. Cool. You right, see well, anybody else is, this, the is this a painting? It's, uh, it's really good. It's, it's a really good painting. A really good painting. You don't Can see I? another person there? You just see one person? I'm sorry, am I making a mistake? No. No, no. no you got it right. Can okay. I message Fabian and say, should we try to pay Garthy for their silence on everything? Could Garthy? we just, Garthy? I mean, the, the, they seem to be quite the business person. And it's bad business to talk about business you do with others. I mean, it, we could pay them, but I don't know. It feels like they can be, I mean, they did very quickly tell us they'd seen Adan's mother, so. Yeah, I guess I was just, I mean, I don't think, I wouldn't mean it in like a rude way. I would yes. mean it in sort of like a respect, like I know mm-hmm. that money is what greases the wheel. Feels like offering Guardi- can't hurt. I can't figure out how to. Would it be crazy if I got a tat? Would you like a celestial tat? I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool. I um, think you should. You should look at you and say, oh, maybe a little sort of uh, Zajiri reverse demonic celestial scripts on you. This is, well, it would be a lovely celebration of your orcish heritage. And uh, it would sort of, I mean, it's kind of the orcish version of being a Satanist, but you're also a good guy. So it's kind of like a win-win. It sounds awesome. Can I get just pain and Zajiri on my inner wrist? Um, you see that, uh, remember, uh that's Gardy, what's going on with Gorthalax. Gardy looks up and says, you know that you get a free tattoo with a room here? <laughs> we'll get a room as well. Can we get the room without the tattoo? <laughs> I will listen, also not take the tattoo. Listen, no one's going <coughs> to force you to get a tattoo, okay. but you do get one and we can't waive that. So <laughs> you can give it to someone else, you can hold it on the tattoo. They can have my tattoo. I'll definitely get a tattoo. Of course. Yeah. Um, Cool. Uh, uh, you... Yeah, I'll get pain here and pleasure here. <laughs> uh, the you, you get a little ping. Uh, oh, no. uh, you get a little ping, Gorjog, from, uh, from the hang van going, hey, hey, come in. What's up? Over and out. Hey, <laughs> I can hear you. Whoa, hey. awesome. Whoa. Um, so we've been discovered by bandits. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and pretty much they are rocking me hard. Why? And where is everyone? Hmm? Where is everyone else? A lot of people are hiding inside me. Um, Galir is either dead or unconscious. Um, okay, who wants a dimension door? Uh, um, I think we're too far to dimension door, aren't we? Yeah, we're like halfway through the city. Yeah. Um, should I, I feel like I can motor through these guys pretty easy. Should I head to where you're all at? Might be pretty disruptive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna beep maybe beep. The... Hey everybody, maybe get out of the way, or I'm gonna out. I'm gonna run over you. So sorry. Um, uh, you hear uh, uh, a voice coming over the radio saying, "Uh, Cathilda has 
brought me back to life with some kind of potion. I'm going to do my best to drive the van. Oh! oh. The van oh, drives no. itself. Oh. Uh, no, it specifically doesn't. Oh, God! <laughs> I'm responsible for what I'm doing! Um, yeah, and, uh, uh, Did you tell him his name? Who, the van? Yeah. Your name's Van Boat. No! His real name! His real name! No, I think it's Van Boat. No. Um, uh, you guys, for uh, for rooms here, there is a. It's the the most basic is two gold pieces a night. You can go up to ten for a little bit nicer with some amenities. And there's like a fifty gold piece premium pass, which is like. Will that fit all of us? I'm getting a fifty gold piece for Galir, getting... <laughs> and a two gold piece for myself. What are you doing? <laughs> you think Galir's gonna make it here? <laughs> I'm, opti- I'm I'm the secreting it. I'm how really big is the How system. big is the fifty gold piece room? Is this like a suite situation that we could all comfortably stay in? Uh, uh, oh, fifty. You there? Like, if you guys want to get multiple suites, you totally can. If you want to be in the same place or like chip in. I and just like, feel like it would be safer for us to all be yeah, in. The yeah, maybe I'll just a tracker and say, can we keep doing that? You guys can get the full benefit of like the entertainment and food for everybody, and then just one big suite together for a round price of 300 gold pieces. Hey. Okay. Pricey, bud. Okay. Sounds great. No, How are we good. dividing it up amongst us? I'll here. get this one, and you guys can get yeah, the we'll next one. Okay. Okay. The next city, great. <laughs> I feel like we should each chip in money into yeah, the pool, I'm cool and then to we just, can just pull from the pool. Pool our money. I think Fabian's got it. I, I, I <laughs> really, I do have got this. I do have got this, guys. I do have got this. Uh, uh, Thanks, Fabian. So are, are, are all of our loved ones and hirelings currently hurtling here? <laughs> yeah. Being driven by Galea through the Sternwood? Do we need to do something about that? Or are we just going to- I think I should disguise myself and run out and like just be back up in case they like run into a store. You want to fly? Yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Great. Can I cast fly as a fourth level spell on both me and Fig? Whee! Uh, yes, you absolutely can. Great. Uh, you yes, guys, ten minutes. Uh, okay. You guys fly over the Sternwood in the evening. Can I hang on to somebody's back and hug uh, yeah, them? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, Look out for arrows. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, then maybe I should cast it on. Um, but I can also cast darkness on us. Oh, great. so we're just a flying. Okay, and I have dark vision because of Boggy. <laughs> uh, incredible. Um, so uh, you take off, flying to the night sky. You see the headlights of the van moving through four castles, just <laughs> running over pirates. <laughs> Beep beep. Glear going. I'm crying so hard that I can't see. Um, and just tearing off down these wooden planks. Uh, what do you guys do as you arrive here? Um, uh, I think we're just there to like watch the. Yes, we want, we, want, yeah. we want to make sure the van gets through. Yeah. Um, you guys see that uh, Tracker actually is going to come with you guys too. Great. Uh, she transforms into a uh, like again like she. Uh, fully becomes that spectral wolf and flies by running alongside you guys. Uh, you see that where she runs, where her like ghostly, like glowing translucent feet touch, a like forest path appears in the air briefly underneath her and fades as she lifts her feet. Um, whew, rushing through the air. As you guys uh, arrive uh, over at the van, um, uh, what, do you, or, yeah, what do you do as you approach the van? Um, I, let's just maybe like hop on top of it. Yeah, I was thinking I could maybe just take over from for driving from Galea because it um, seems very. That's true. Too. Yeah, let's just cool. fly into the. Yeah. Uh, you guys see that uh, Cathilda, uh, we'll do, let's do a little bit different music here. Um, uh, you see that uh, uh, as you guys go, um, you see Cathilda is leaning out, hurling daggers at people, just uh, arrows are raining down from Sandra Lynn up above, flying over with Baxter. As you guys approach, uh, you see that Sandra Lynn goes, just in time, thanks for coming. Um, you guys fly in, Tracker rushes in, um, Galeer's in the driver's seat. You see that Rog has been fighting like tremendously. Um, as you guys rush in, just you guys roll initiative. So Riz, Adine, and uh, Fig. Are we just smoking hookah? You're smoking hookah, having a ball. <laughs> Am I getting Seven. a tattoo? Nine, I got three. I rolled cool. a net one. Uh, awesome. Uh, what is, what's the first thing that Riz does as he approaches? Mm. Um, 
they're like associate, just like a horde of about like ten pirates coming out onto the street, blasting at the hang van as Galir drives it. Um, I think I'm gonna like hop in Galir's lap as I like push him out of the way, and I go, um, "Get out of the way, Galir! I've killed people before. It's fine." <laughs> um, cool. You are like jumping. Give me an uh, give me acrobatics to leap in there. Um, that is fifteen. Cool. Uh, you leap in. Um, uh, do you? As you leap in, give me a dexterity saving throw. DC, I'll call it a DC 15. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, oh, 15. Oh, hey! Oh, yeah. You do not hit Galir in the head and knock him unconscious. <laughs> no. uh, he goes, oh, very well. Uh, <laughs> young Reese, thank God you're here. I've taken so many lives, I can't stop crying. <laughs> uh, you're an adventurer now, Galir. Oh, why? Um, you, uh, uh, after <laughs> Riz goes, Perfect. Um, you see, uh, Rog fully bleeding out. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, Rog, is, Rog was with us in that. Rog was with you guys, yeah. my mistake. Um, He's you, currently hitting that ho a hookah real hard. Yeah. Um, cool, uh, you guys see that uh, uh, Tracker uh, uh, flies up to where Sandra Lynn is. Um, uh, that's next, what did you guys get over here? I got seven. Seven? I got a three. Uh, Fig, you're next to go. All right, is there a group of, you said there's groups of pirates coming at us? Yes. Okay, I wanna uh, target the group of pirates that I can target the most with a 10 foot radius sphere and shatter them. Ideally, if they're like under an awning so that then the awning collapses on them. Awesome. Um, you can get four of these pirates with one shatter. Okay, cool, I will do that then. Uh, and I'm gonna do it at a third level. Do you just roll damage from that? Uh, well, they do. Um, they do a constitution save. And they get <clears throat> 21 thunder damage. Ooh, 21 thunder damage? Yeah, or I mean half if they save. Okay, um, hold on one second, I'll roll for these four. You see uh, that as you, ooh, those are bad rolls. Um, you see that as you, on your base, flying, you're like a flying rock star. <laughs> um, uh, two of these pirates turn around and say, what beat is, <laughs> <laughs> And you see that they ex just explode, fully explode. <laughs> and the other two are grievously injured. Um, oh, it feels like metal somehow. <laughs> That's way. rock, baby. This is uh, what I've been telling y'all about. Ah! Um, that is uh, big. That is going to be Adai. Uh Yeah, I'm going to cast Lightning Bolt out in front of us. So it's a 100 foot line. Anything in front of us takes 8d6 lightning damage uh, on, a, on a dex saving throw. Awesome. Um, you can catch uh, another four of these pirates with that lightning. Okay, so that's 10. Ooh, 20. That's 30 damage. Oh, uh, three of the four are gone in an instant, uh, and the last one is half dead. You've killed five of the ten of them Great. right away. Oh, by the way, also, anybody who tries to get in the back door, my snare spell lasts for eight hours, mm -hmm. uh, and they have to do an intelligence saving throw um, to spot the trap, spot the... Uh, awesome. Uh, um, snare. Uh, these pirates are gonna go. Um, one takes a shot at Fig and misses. <laughs> Another takes a shot. Adine hits. Um, shield. <laughs> misses. Uh, pff, a little abjurative shield goes in front of you. Uh, pirate misses. Um, most of the ones that you see are dead on the ground with arrows through them. A bunch take shots at Sandra Lynn, who's been working these guys for a while. Uh, Sandra Lynn flying says, hell yeah, light him up! And you hear from Flintlock pistols and a uh, pistol ball goes under her arm <gasps> into her rib cage and she falls no! off of Baxter. Um, uh, Sandra Lynn begins to fall. Uh, Galir uh, is in the back. Cathilda quickly finishes off the two that were injured by you. Now there's only three left. Um, that's gonna go back to the top of the order with Riz. Yikes. Um, okay. So Sandra Lynn is 
falling out of the air. What is, how many more pirates are there? Are they just like shooting? About three of them uh, that have just shot uh, flintlocks. Got it. Okay. Um, I am going to, I guess I'll shoot at the ones that um, Go are for shooting uh, Sandalin. Cool. Uh, unless I can hit them with the car. Actually, feel free to give me a uh, just a dexterity check. Sweet. Hey. Matt, 20. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Go ahead. I was going to say this is 4d6 slamming damage. Go ahead and roll 8d6. I want to say, like, as I push like, Galir out of the way, he's been super hesitant. <laughs> I lean out the window, like, shooting in a direct line so they have to move and get in the way of the van and then try <laughs> to crush them. <laughs> Uh, eight. Nope. Yeah. Right. Five, eight, sixteen, twenty-nine damage. Jesus! The last three pirates go. You see one of them uh, hit Sandra Lynn. Goes yeah! Ah! Headlights. <laughs> beep beep. You see the van says far out. Uh, as you just feel bodies under the wheels of the van. Um, you see the glare goes, the sharks on the van are not strong enough. You can feel the bones crunching even while you're inside. I pass Boggy to him. I need the frog. Um, <laughs> uh, you see, uh, that is Tracker's turn. Uh, Tracker flies up, um, catches Sandra Lynn. Um, as she catches Sandra Lynn, uh, in her mouth, um, you see Tracker flies down, lands with Sandra Lynn on a rooftop, transforms, um, and you see that Tracker does this like insane healing spell uh, where she changes her mouth for a second to have fangs, goes like, <laughs> bites into her own wrist to tear open blood, uh, bites Sandra Lynn's wrist, and puts them together, and you see the blood gushes out of her body into Sandra Lynn's body, and Sandra Lynn is basically almost guaranteed fully healed. Did you have Tracker? Yeah. Um, uh, as she like exchanges blood with Sandra Lynn for a moment, and Sandra Lynn is fully healed. The ball is pushed out of the wound in her chest. Uh, and uh, you guys are, as almost as soon as you started it, out of combat. Oh. All right. Uh, all time worst time worst thing. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm almost too <laughs> full of me. <laughs> you know when you drink a lot, it feels almost yeah. like you ate? Yes, yes. It's <laughs> like you don't need dinner anymore. It's like, <laughs> need was dinner. Calories wise, you're probably around the same boat. Yeah, uh, totally. You guys see your friends all come in to the <laughs> Gold Gardens. Starving. <laughs> Honestly, drink meat. That's I can't drink meat, I'm, I'm on meds. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm also it's straight true. edge. You, you have straight, straight edge except drugs. Straight, straight edge, edge except <laughs> drugs, remember? What does that get you? <laughs> it's just a lifestyle. Isn't straight edge like virginity as well? Isn't it like no sex? I think so. You know, that's personal, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were working on opening up. Uh, wow. Well, look what, look what good it did me. Right? <laughs> wow. Uh, you guys walk in. Um, this bar is so jaunty. It's extremely jaunty. Um, uh, there's actually, but there's like other places right here. Do you guys want, you guys, there's like a, the very raucous place. There's also like a more chill laid back place that might have like better food and. Mm, yeah, <laughs> let's go there. Cool, cool, cool. Um, you guys head over to the more chill place. Um, you see that there's cool shows going on here. There's like dancers and acrobats, but they're kind of farther away. So you can like relax. There's not like pressure to watch the show. Um, you guys are enjoying this like incredible fair of uh, sort of like a hearty like pirate stew along with like sort of a garlicky flatbread. There's mead and wine and liquor and whiskey flowing. Um, you see Sandra Lynn comes in and goes, whoo, I almost died. Yeah, are you okay? Do you need any more hit points? Sweet, I'm good. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do though. I'm gonna get fucking drunk. Do you want a shot? <laughs> Okay. Let's do another. If my yeah. mom, if my mom's doing you it, you were straight edge except for drugs. Yeah, I'm not gonna be straight edge. You drank the <laughs> last time we played. <laughs> I know with my mom. That's my mom. I have dragged her in a weird way where I kind of like shift, and then all of a sudden I'm riding on her back, like a piggyback <laughs> ride. Uh, she transforms into a full like wolf. 
up and begins to like sort of just prance around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, Tracker, even in wolf form, she's kind of shaking her head. <laughs> Um, <laughs> see, uh, she heads off. Uh, uh, I need a hat. The ball, let's do snuff for the first time, right? What? Come on, let's do snuff. Remember what my father offered you guys all snuff? The ball, do snuff. Yo, come on, the ball. Do snuff. Do snuff ball. with us, dude. I'm not gonna do the drugs. Ball. Come on, do snuff. It's, we're in Leviathan. At, like, for the rest of your life, you don't want to, you, you want to say that you were in Leviathan and like, not doing Wait, snuff? I just want to say something. For real, if you don't want to do drugs, you don't have to. But let me just say that, like, you know, when I do snuff, it's like, oh, like, it, it's not just like about partying. It's like, you know, your mind is like this, and then you, you know, but then it's like this. Do you get it? All right, this is, now this is convincing. How about that? I'll do a little bit of snuff. Yes! Oh, it's gonna do a little bit of snuff! That was See, Don't get the ball on a drug that will focus him more. <laughs> you see that Galir looks up and says, I think someone has spiked my stew with drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Your stew? Yes, there's uh, something in I it. I think it's we, just because it's the we, first food you've eaten that's not dairy based in about 30 years. <laughs> no, it's years. burning my mouth. Is that, oh, it's spicy. It's just, what? That's it's just spice. Hard? It's burning I, I, my mouth like drugs. I pat Galir on the back and cast Warding Bond. <laughs> Here, I think um, the little coal from the hookah fell into your stew. <laughs> uh, I've terribly burned my mouth. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to the bathroom to run cold water. Do they have plumbing here? I don't know. I have not I got honestly, I mean, depend, you could go up to one of our suites. We have luxury suites that we you- We do have the best money can buy. For the next hour, Galera's AC goes up by one and any damage she takes, I take instead. <laughs> he, he listens, I'm going to go try to find a bathroom. And he walks around the corner. Almost immediately, you begin to start taking <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> what is he doing? is living, all right? I don't know what to tell you. And he's Did just he scrubbing, fall he's just, like, he's just his, scrubbing his tongue too hard. <laughs> um, you see um, uh, you see that uh, Galir comes back out with a black eye and says, <laughs> um, someone in the bathroom called me their hearty and I asked, I apologized to them and they punched me in the face. Why don't you go stay in the suite, Gillian? I think I should go to the suite. How much damage did that take? You took one point of damage. <laughs> um, it's okay. One tenth of his hit points. Uh, the food here is completely inedible and uh, the people here are, honestly, even without the violence, much too rowdy. And you see that he uh, walks away. Is there some kind of non-alcoholic grog that I could drink? Um, uh, you see that one of the uh, servers of the Gold Gardens comes over and uh, presents you a like beautiful fizzing pomegranate juice in a little glass chalice. I also, I also will get cool. one of those, and I do my dragon spice. Uh, you do some dragon spice. You guys are a, are a bunch of fucked up children. I guess I'll do a little bit of it. I'll save some for later. Uh, uh... Is there anyone who works here I could ask about? Um, uh, is, is there a bartender anywhere nearby that yeah, I just want to ask? Yeah, let's do a bartender. Hey, uh, you guys got any like um, kind of cell towers around here? <laughs> just sort of towers for uh, Sorry, sort of... what's that? So this a is my crystal. Tower? Oh, we do. We do have a cell tower. Really? Oh. Yes, we actually do. Wait, really? Yes, absolutely. Really? Yes, we have a cell tower. Where is it? What is it? Um, it's it's in Afterward, Afterward. near near Poop City. <laughs> so it's near Poop City? It's a, it's oh, so a boat it's a, pun. No, I know. I, Poop City Poop. is one of the, it's perhaps the nicest neighborhood in, in Leviathan. <laughs> We're like here. It's up on the it's poop. It's like right there. Okay. So <laughs> why are you, why do you find Poop City funny? I don't find it funny. <laughs> 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 that was Zach talking. <laughs> uh, you see, he says, uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, do, are, are, do, you, do you need access to it? Or? I was just like trying to make a call and we're so far out that it's like... Are you trying to make a call to somebody? Yeah. Who are you trying to make a call to? Someone, um... His girlfriend. My girlfriend, uh, she's in, uh, Solace, so... Well... Or she's on the, on the mainland. Oh, well then I don't think that a cell tower would be much help to you if she's all the way on the mainland. What? Really? What is a cell tower to you? The brig! 
Oh. It's a giant tower of cells, prison cells. <laughs> You've got got. That's that's getting got. That's you have been owned, my friend. <laughs> oh yeah, listen. You keep your tongue in your mouth. I haven't owned anybody here. <laughs> what are you, are you saying? I'm trying to start a fight? No, no, no. We, no. We're using uh, colloquial ra you raz, Salesian you tea raz slang. Yes. Yeah. You raz Who did him. I raz? And have? You raz. You raz me. And it was you, a good raz. It was an he liked it. it was, he said you Cell Tower up for has a different meaning to me. You dunked uh, on him. And also, yeah, Poop yeah. City's funny. I didn't mean to say Poop City's not funny. <laughs> he doesn't want Poop City to be funny. Oh, okay. Poop City's nice? Poop Everyone City's on the count nice. of three, tell me whether Poop City's funny to you or not. One, two, three. Not yes. funny. That's a very Ryan. good boat pun. I, it's not funny. I'm dying <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Riding on a wolf around the bar. <laughs> uh, Poop City! <laughs> uh, you see that uh, the bartender, so yeah, the, uh, the, the cell tower is referring to as the brig. Um, uh, you look over. Uh, uh, you guys all have to take a little time for yourself. The only people that are not here right now are Galeer. Uh, the the hangman and the, the van boat are both in the stables, with, along with Baxter being mm -hmm. cleaned and groomed and everything like that. Um, uh, so it's just you guys, Sandra Lynn, Tracker, Rog. Uh, Cathilda has also adjourned to uh, her room. She's not down in the mail. Uh, so you guys have a table to yourself. Um, uh, you see that uh, Rog says, so what's the play from here? What's the next move? Heading to, are, we, are we on to Fallon now? Yeah. yeah. I think we relay what we heard to the people Maybe. who were in the van so that they all know. Yeah. Can, Can I just to make sure cast locate creature on my mother? See if she's a thousand feet. Cool. You cast locate creature on your mother, you do not come back with info. Right. Do you want to try? I, I think the next move is probably to go to Fallon L, but also I think. Uh, Old Captain James might try to stop us. Do you want to see if he's skulking around somewhere? Well, I yeah. use both my fourth level spells, so I can't do locate creature, yeah. unfortunately. But we could. I mean, I would be down to just uh, sneak Oscar around. Sounds. We're wasted, and by we, I mean everybody but me. Wait, yeah. I'm just, yeah, so we just it sounds like a snuff, even all right. better of an idea. Um, cool. Uh, uh, so you see, uh, yeah, Rog says, honestly, we, let's have a night where we party down. You know, let's, let's awesome. Like, we, should, we deserve it. Yeah, awesome. let's tie one on and then let's go to Fallon L and let's get your hot sister mm -hmm. out. Tracker, you think she's hot too, right? Is that cool if I say that or does that feel just. Tracker hasn't met my sister. I show Tracker a photo. Pretty hot, right? Mm. We like a thing. I mean, Absolutely. not my type, but yeah, I can yeah, see. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah, I it's know like I, see I it. can appreciate hotness, but if I talk to her in real life, <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go oh. read my book. <laughs> Can Gorgug have gotten a tattoo? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Gonna get like a big tin flower on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you get a huge tin flower on your awesome. shoulder. You get some cool Zajiri, like orcish celestial runes. Can I get Tracker on my neck, like right here? Uh, yeah, you see that uh, Tracker starts crying as you get the tattoo. She's <laughs> holding your hand. Um, she gets a tattoo that says Kristen on her Aww. neck. Oh, I do get each other's tattoos in hers. Classic gun. Good <laughs> I do choice by a 17 year old. Yes. <laughs> Cool. Uh, I'll everyone never here, go. oh, pain and pleasure in Zajiri. Yeah. Cool. Um, everyone here, uh, uh, make a perception or an insight. That's cute. That's cute. Sixteen. Uh, Twenty. Not that. Eighteen insight. I got uh, a nat one. Nat one. Um, and you ten. barf and shit yourself. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh no. <laughs> Uh, did anybody, who got, who here got below a 10? I did. Cool. Uh, uh, I'm gonna need you guys to make a constitution save with disadvantage. I need all of you guys to make one just regular. Okay. Oh no. Right. I'm, constitution's not constitution my thing. Constitution's not my thing either, really. Oh, Blue, nine. I got an eight. <coughs> they got 20, but a dirty 20. A six. I got eight. You guys are blasted. Just black. You get, you've gotten tattoos. You're, you are lit to hell. Um, I ain't drinking. Uh, uh, you're not drinking, so you're actually, you're okay. Uh, what did you guys get for your constitution saves? I actually got a 20, I got 30, a, 20. I got a nine. 15. Yeah. Nine, 15. Riz, uh, the snuff powder in your body is so small, you don't metabolize this. You are <laughs> coked out of your fucking board. Um, uh, you, you, you are solving so many mysteries right now. <laughs> Night York. 
I, <laughs> I feel like Riz goes and gets memento tattoos of all. Of them. <laughs> he gets like a ton of tattoos of all of the clues that they've had you so just far. You get Night Your as a yeah, I get I get a yeah. bunch of different yeah like everything that is on my board. Yeah. I go up and I re- I need to remember it all the time. Hell what yes. if someone wipes Hell my yes, memory? Hell yes. Look, if somebody if somebody that wipes my memory, I wouldn't even no, know what I was doing. But if I get like it you permanently on this, my will mind, never then I will never You'll forget. Never forget. forget. I can't. Anytime I look in the mirror, I got my back. Fantastic. Okay, so you'll get tattoos. And my body too. Hell yes. Um, Fabian, what was your constitution? Fifteen. Fifteen. Great. Um. Uh, you're totally solid. You can hold your liquor. You and Rog, who's also okay, are both like ru- like uh, Rog is like rubbing Gorgug's back, being like, "You gotta drink water, bro. You gotta <laughs> I drink can't. water." <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, it's okay. Drink water. It's salt water. We're in the ocean. No, I can't man. drink it. Got good no, water it's okay. here. It's no. good water. It's they good have water. good water. It's good. It's water. in a barrel. It comes out of a barrel. It's barrel water. Where did the barrel come from? <laughs> I don't. I, I, that part I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna roll for Tracker. Uh, ooh, Tracker is is starting to get a little bit uh, wasted as well. Uh, as Tracker gets more wasted, do you keep up or do you start to like slow? I, I probably kind of re, re, reorient <laughs> myself. Re-orient. I start cool. making some tea. I'm like, we'll take two mint teas. Actually, uh, you see that uh, Tracker um, uh, is just sort of leaning against you and going like. I like I like being furry. I like I like being covered in fur, but uh, you know, I don't know if I could do what Uncle Javon does. I don't know I don't know. I don't know if I can always. Because people do treat you different. They could do treat you different. What do you mean? Is staying in your wolf form? Staying in wolf form. Totally. Do you think I'm hot both wolf? ways? Both ways yeah. really hot, yeah. I think you're hot both ways. <laughs> Sixty-nine. That's cute. It's really. I don't have drunk sex. I don't remember. So, with this hot, maybe tomorrow I'm morning. S- I'm so tired. Yeah, me too. Wait. Um, oh, you see, he, I try to keep her awake yeah, so maybe uh, she can cast the rune circle um, later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you gotta stay awake, actually, babe. Come on, I'm baby. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you, what'd you roll for your perception again? Oh, perception a while ago. Yes, a while ago. Uh, it was like over twenty. Over twenty. Cool. Um, uh, Fig, you're a super. Uh, you're super drunk, uh, but you're talking with your your mom is there. Um, well, technically, I did dragon spice. Oh, dragon spice, cool. So you're rolling. You're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, was it ketamine? Yeah. You're yeah. like you're barely just standing moving. in the middle of the bar, <laughs> not doing anything. <laughs> you see that uh, uh, Sandra Lynn's there with oh, you. So um, uh, Sandra Lynn's sort of smiling. She's she's had a bunch of shots. She looks over at you. Your mom gets like. Your mom's an angry drunk. Uh, she's like looking around like she wants to like start some shit. But she looks and says, so, mm. daughter of mine, mm. looking around the bar, who looks, who, do you have any little crushes? Do you like any of the people here in the bar? Um, I don't know. You don't? There's a lot. Of, well, you know what we used to say, and I'm not saying this is okay, but me and my adventuring party back in the day, do you know what we would say? There's a lot of talent in this bar. <laughs> a lot of very talented people. Uh, you but, see? I mean, yeah, and then, but like, how do you, if you don't have that talent yet, because you've only been carrying inappropriate relationships, <laughs> what is it like? Like, is it obvious? <laughs> um. Uh, she she looks and says, "Do you want to learn how to how to not you know without any illusion? Do you want to learn how to how to flirt? How to like make it work?" <laughs> From you, yeah, yeah. She From nods. Me. She looks. She scans more like a ranger. She literally is like. She takes a little bit of like sawdust from the floor, throws it up, smells it on the wind, puts a hand to her ear, and zeroes in at the bar on Guardy O'Brien. Um, you see, she goes. Watches and stands up, uh, walks over to the bar, elbows in, orders something, puts it in front of Guardy, and starts talking to them. Um, uh, uh, she talks to Guardy for a little while, and you see that she uh, uh, first is like exchanging drinks. Uh, you see, she says 
something that's like a little bit, you can't quite keep, make out what she's saying, but she says something that is clearly very like challenging because a bunch of people that work for Gardy mm -hmm. all kind of like react as though she said something kind of scandalous. Uh, Gardy smiles, they turn around and start like trading barbs with Sandra Lynn. Uh, you see Sandra Lynn uh, so fast you almost couldn't see it, uh, just in a way that's very interpersonal and seems very low key, uh, touches Gardy's arm for a second. Um, touches the arm again. Uh, they talk a little bit more. Uh, Gardy orders two drinks, and while they are turned around, Sandra Lynn looks, winks over at you. Uh, Gardy gets two drinks, says something, and you see that Gardy and Sandra Lynn both walk out of the bar. Wow. Whoa. Uh, Kristen, I... with that high perception, you are, you're more sober than Fig right now. You notice all this. Cool. Um, hmm. Your mom just left the garden. Yeah, she was kind of giving me a lesson in flirting uh, without using any sort of charms or disguises. Um, and, uh, but then it, I don't know if I'm supposed to follow if the lesson is continuing. <laughs> oh. I have a feeling no. But, no. Uh, what okay. do we think about Gardy? Should we do something? Uh, I mean, I honestly like right now I feel like a little like like in a weird way kind of jealous right you know because it's like but I mean he, yeah I guess yeah maybe like if I was yeah oh you mean like are they safe yeah yeah you know what I think what I want to do is go with tracker while we still have her set up this freaking rune circle and then maybe go with fig to follow her mom I, cool. I feel like ass her daughter, I really can't follow my mom into this situation. <laughs> we don't have to like stay and listen. We just have to like hear the very beginning so we get the gist. Because I don't think there's gonna this be This is like... definitely traumatizing, but I'll come. Okay, I'll you come. don't have to no, go. No, 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 I'll go, I'm going. Maybe Adon and I can go and you don't have to go and hear your mom smooch uh, that person. Yeah. Uh, tracker goes, uh, smoo who's Sandra Lynn smooch? I think Gertie. What's that person's name? Gertie. 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 Uh, <laughs> see, Ra goes, shh, shh, it's okay. It's okay. It's <laughs> I held up hey. my, my new forearm tattoo. Gertie. <laughs> Wait, when did you get a tattoo? I have a Gardy's million name. tattoos now. I have all of these. I'm going to go work on the van. You have such small amounts of skin. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, let's watch a movie in the room, right? We're doing a thing. Yeah, we are, but let's get everyone oh, to go watch a movie yes, let's in, go watch in the a room. Movie in Instead the of room. going and working on the van at night. I gotta fix the van though. I uh, think that's a great the idea. Is so good. You'll figure out how to get into that special room thing God, one day. If I had spells, I could fix a van like that. You guys, let's yeah, watch a we'll spaghetti tomorrow. western, okay. and I'll make a bunch of popcorn, I love and you guys Westerns. can eat chocolate. Chocolate popcorn in a big popcorn. bed. Tracker, how you feeling? Where are you at? Wait, uh... I'm feeling okay. Do you need me? She's going. Okay. Do you need me to go cast a spell? Yeah. Uh, I can do it. Uh, who's going with Tracker up to cast the spell? I, th I think. Well, if we're going to. Do you need me to watch? Oh, well, Sandra Lynn. We can all. We can all go back. Uh, I think I... now, if if Sandra Lynn's maybe in trouble, I kind of have to go and make sure she's okay. Just... Just... All right, then I'll go with Fig, and then. You I cast Bless on you two and Tracker. <laughs> okay, great. Cool. Can I uh, slip away from the group? Uh, Good God. Yeah, make a stealth check. Do, is it? Uh, oh, wow. 22. 22. That beats everyone's passive, passive perception. Dude, oh, passive perception. Right? I'm going to say, in my paranoid state, can I follow Fabian? <laughs> Uh, he, Fabian has bypassed your passive perception. Um, but so he's hurting perception cats. on snuff. Uh, uh, but I will say that if, um, so I think, yeah, Fabian's tucked off on his own. God damn it. Um, 
All the adults are gone. So Tracker, who's going to the room with Tracker to do these spells? Everyone. I'll go to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have, I just, I'm trying to learn some magic, so I'm gonna cool. go Let's do it, yeah. You go, Tracker does the moon haven on the suite. Amazing. Um, immediately falls asleep. Oh, good night. Okay. Um, immediately falls asleep. I put some water next to her. Um, uh, cool. Um, uh, then. Gorgo's trying to cook in there. Gorgo's trying to cook. What's Ad I am doing? Is anyone uh, leaving? I, th I think me and Fig are gonna yeah. make sure that Sanderlin's okay. Yeah, I'm going but with the two of them, but the... I'm, I'm kind of following behind them. I'm I... letting them take the lead. So you guys go to the room first, and then Adain, Fig. Oh, no, we shouldn't go to the room first. This is precious time. Yeah. I think I went yeah, to the room. Guys... Okay. Cool. Yeah, so it's then just me and you. So yeah. it's just Adain and Fig. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Uh, we're gonna run these scenes this way. So Gorgug, mm -hmm. Riz, Rog, Tracker, Kristen, go to the suite. You can already hear Galir is asleep off somewhere. <laughs> Cathilda is asleep in a little in a little corner. Um, uh, Fabian, where do you walk off to? Uh, I'd like to climb up to the Crow's Keep. You head way off into the city. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a uh, wisdom check with advantage. All right. Uh, With advantage? Yeah, 14 and 14. Um, you find your way through the city. Um, you walk along. You are not troubled on your journey. And you begin to climb up the vast masts of Rigabah all the way up to the Crow's Keep. Uh, upon arriving, you're, you're there for a long time. Um, uh, what do you do when you arrive there? Just look out on all of Leviathan, and uh, I don't know. I, I guess I, I speak to the wind, uh, with hopes of it carrying my words to my father. Uh, you speak, looking out over the vast pirate city. Um, as you do so, um, go ahead now and give me a uh, just a perception check. Uh, that's a uh, six. The wind blows over Leviathan. You look out. The wind carries your words away on a voyage that you cannot see the end of. For Fig and Adine, they go to observe. Uh, uh, cool. So, uh, first of all, give me an investigation check. Um, I'm just gonna, in general, give you some bardic inspiration. Okay, great. Just and can I use for uh, Boggy to? Yeah, absolutely. Twelve. Did you use plus? No. Um, perception. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, Twenty-three. Uh, so oh, it's perception. Oh, investigation. Oh, twenty-five. Cool. Uh, you use Boggy. Move around. Um, as you do, um, you arrive. Uh, at a huge pair of golden doors. Um, as you arrive here, you hear like humming music in the back. This is clearly an off-limits area. You see that there are two guards here. Um, there are these tall, half-work pirates. Um, you hear low music uh, coming from back behind the doors. Uh, as you guys approach, uh, this is outside of the building that the bar you were at is in, you see they look at you and say, Good evening, young madams. Can we help you? Um, You're the charismatic one. Yes. Uh, yes, you can help us. I, I forgot my watch in there. You forgot your watch in here? Well, well, all right. We'll be sure to give it to you. Which okay, you're... actually, I'll, you know, I'll just tell you the truth. My mom is in there. I feel a little homesick. I am a child. <laughs> We're both children. Uh, give me a persuasion check. <laughs> a pity check. <laughs> give me uh, a seven. Less. Oh, right. Uh, 18. They look at each other and they say, well, damn. All right. You see one of them dips into the door. Um, 
you see, uh, about a minute or two later, uh, Sandra Lynn comes out to the door. Um, you see that she is, uh, let me put this. You know when someone has put their clothes back on very quickly? Mm -hmm. Can I just do, real quick, hey mom, just real quick, I wanna do like a check to make sure she's okay. Uh, sure, give me an insight or a perception. Okay, it's gonna be five plus. plus. Oh! Can I do this and also an insight into if she's okay? Mm -hmm. Um, 18. Uh, she appears, she doesn't, she's not been magically swip swapped. She's not under a dominant person effect. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry, mom. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to get in the way. People put ideas in my head that you could be in danger. This is just a really powerful person that we don't know much about. I'm really sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. I don't even know what's... Sweetie, it's okay. It's okay. okay. You're okay. It's all, it's all okay, all right? Okay. Are you good? I'm good. Are you good? Do you need me to save you? <laughs> Just kidding. I run away. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm also leaving. Good, good night. Have a nice night. I'll see you in the morning. Um, oh, ahoy. That, uh, that means goodbye here as well as I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, ahoy. She walks away. You guys get back as things have kind of quieted down. I'm um, mortified. Um, you walk back, you get back, uh, and you see, uh, in the little suite, a lot of people have fallen asleep or are drunk or whatever, uh, Galir is up making some dinner for himself, um, because he didn't really get to eat anything. Um, you see he looks over, he's got a bandage around the end of his tongue. Bopo. Hi, Galir. A bandage? <laughs> How did you I, get a band-aid to adhere to your tongue? <laughs> it doesn't really. Oh. <laughs> you look uh, you look like you've just seen a ghost. Is nah, no, I'm fine, I'm good. It's just the drugs. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. It's just the drugs, right, Adine? Just yes, the drugs. I have also taken drugs. Uh you should give me a deception roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a seven. Okay. I got a 25. <laughs> so you okay, at, I've not taken any drugs. So I don't know why I was like. You see, he looks at you Oh, says, actually, I didn't add the bless. I got a 29. <laughs> uh, uh, Glee looks at you and says, where have you just come from? Downstairs. True. Adan. That's true. Adan. <laughs> know this. My keen eyes. Maybe I cast friends on Galea. <laughs> okay. Uh, you cast friends. Uh, go ahead. He fails to save. Go ahead and make whatever charisma based roll you're going to make. Uh, okay, great. Um, Remember you have bardic inspiration. <laughs> right. Um, uh, I'm going to, I guess, um, make it. Try and make a persuasion check on him sure. to be like that. We don't, you don't have, he doesn't have to worry about anything. Sure. Okay. Um, Eighteen. Cool. Um, you see, he says, "Oh, very good. I shall continue to heat up this yogurt." Oh, um, <laughs> Galia, oh, come on. Oh my God. Where does, did you get that from? They don't sell that here. It Do you bring that with them? Soup if it's hot. I stashed some in the van. Uh, how, so it's just been in the in the heat for three days. Am I still awake? Uh, you are still awake. Yeah. Oh, can uh, I wait. message Kristen um, just in my mind uh, and say uh, she was fine? I'm absolutely humiliated. I just knocked on a door and she came out with, with sex on her face. <laughs> <laughs> just. I, I, I decide what I think that means. <laughs> uh, Kristen, give me uh, give me an insight check. Um, you see Tracker uh, stirs in her sleep a little bit, and she looks up at you. She said, she, uh, she's totally out of it, but she goes, so this is Sandra Lynn? What? Sandra Lynn's, is Sandra Lynn's kissing someone? I think so, yeah. Jawbone? No. Isn't Jawbone Polly? Yeah, I think they're fine. Yeah, she's with, out. um... Uh, you, what you guys 
heard from the last time that Jawbone spoke was that Jawbone is Polly and that Sandra Lynn had asked him to be monogamous. Ew. Oh! I thought this was all loud. Uh, oh, sh yeah. She's, yeah, she's kissing. Okay. Oh! Yeah. yeah. Maybe track a wet remember in the morning. You yeah, adults are Come more complicated than, you know, than we mm. think that they are. Wow. Well, the Sandra Lynn is both more and less cool than I thought that she was. Oh, Mom. Uh, you look at Galier and says, when you all stand in the middle of the room pointing at each other, I know you're doing the <laughs> message can Can I can I go back out to the door that they were just at? Sure. Uh, and uh, is there a way for me to hide so that the guards don't see me? Because I want to cast something at the door. Uh, give me a stealth check. Okay. I guess can I come? I'll I'll go with. Okay, Christine. thank God, because my stealth is negative three. <laughs> <laughs> negative cool. three. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Um, I'm going to say you go to the door. I'm going to need perception checks from both of you. Interesting. Um, perception, I only got a 14. Cool. Can I do insight or uh, investigate? Uh, yeah, you can do investigate. Investigate, investigate, investigate would give me a 21. 21, cool. Um, you look up in the corner, Riz, and you see a flicker of light up at a corner of a building, just for a moment, almost like a piece of glass adjusting, like an iris refocusing. What? Do you think we're being watched? And a moment later, it's gone. Was that clear voice? Yes. Um, you know a moment later it was clairvoyance. Someone was looking at you. Um, Can I cast Detect Good and Evil from the door to see what's going on in there? Um, you cast Detect Good and Evil. We're going to cut from you guys back to Crow's Keep. As we cut back to Crow's Keep. Fabian, looking out over the city of Leviathan. footsteps behind you. And you see emerging in the darkness figures hooded and cloaked oh. as they move through the mist towards you. All right. Uh, I draw the sword of the sea caster. Uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, you best be on your way uh, lest we have a problem. Great, I draw it. <laughs> uh, let's do it. Oh you, my God. Uh, you hear a voice from within one of the cowls, a face you cannot see, say, Oh, indeed, do we have business. You, son of the sea caster. For indeed, we have sought you and found you. We're all huge fans! And you oh. see that Alistair takes his cowl off. <laughs> I brought him all here! We had to come and say hello! Oh, the, one, you can't do that. But two... Uh, a bunch of weird warlocks take their cowls off, lift you up in the middle of the night and go, whoa, whoa. But he's a jolly good fella! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. But he's a jolly good fella! Me down. But me down. he's a jolly good right. fella! Oh. That's all for this week! Oh my God. Fantasy High! Tune in next week! Bye-bye!